Hey guys, we're back for another podcast. This time we'll be covering Dragon Ball Fighters, our hands-on experience with it, uh, and pretty much just the entire game engine uh, between all of us. I think we played it for like at least a couple hours at E3. Uh, first, let me do the introductions. Uh, first off, we have Killy. What's going on, Killy? Nothing much. Hey, everyone. And we also have Mir joining us today as well. What's going on, Mir? Hey. Well... We're here doing a podcast, I guess. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so last time, yeah, we covered Marvel. It was a pretty long podcast, but I think this one might be longer. So strap yourself down, guys, because we got a lot to talk about since it's just like a completely new game here. So uh, first off, let's talk about, um, you know, just our feelings about Dragon Ball Fighters before we even had a chance to play the game and like our impressions of it and such, because it was, it was a huge surprise, right? Uh, we were going into E3 thinking, you know, well, I was personally obviously was going to test Marvel, and then you guys were going to do your own thing. But then uh, I think it was just just a week before E3 is when they, we had the the leak announcement to Dragon Ball Fighters, and then we finally had the official announcement on Twitter from Bandai Namco. So it was a huge surprise. But the biggest thing was that it was going to be you know developed by Arxis. So they went to Arxis to make their game, or we're like, Arx is, you know, Guilty Gear, you know, this is gonna be crazy, because, you know, Dragon Ball is mostly known as, like, this casual fighter, but now we're gonna have, you know, uh, a company that usually makes, like, competitive fighters uh, inject, you know, their formula into the game, and of course, the engine, I think, is a no-brainer for this game, and when we saw those screenshots, I was just like, whoa, I was just super pumped, and, and this was before we even knew that Dragon Ball was gonna be at E3, we just knew that it existed at that point. So, so Killy, what, what was your impression? Like, before you even knew the game was at E3, like, just on the screenshots alone or the news? The, the news was, like, interesting. I didn't know whether it was uh, real or not because it was a leak, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't confirmed at that point. Mm -hmm. And then we had, like, those really small, low-res screenshots yeah. that I can remember anyways. Um, so I was like, okay, it looks nice, kind of. Like, don't know yeah. for sure. I need to see it. Uh, moving in motion, right? For sure. And then, like, the Sunday that we left for E3, mm -hmm. uh, the trailer dropped, right? And yeah. Were, and the height levels were, like, out of control because you're like, oh, my God. And then someone, tw uh, one of my friends tweeted me that it was going to be playable at E3 because Bandai Namco tweeted yeah. that, right? So he, he uh, quoted that to me and then it was just like oh my god right it was like i'm gonna be on i'm gonna be on the dbz station like all weekend <laughs> oh dude we were we were uh we watched the first trailer in the airport yes in the airport so it, it was pretty crazy when we were using the wi-fi we were showing i was like oh my god this looks sick right oh poor Mir was you know on the plane from italy so you know he wasn't with <laughs> us but we were in toronto at the time i think yeah, but uh, you know, by that point, we realized like, oh my god, like you know, I hope this is at E3, you know, yeah, for sure. When we finally saw it in motion, that it was actually like you know a 2.5D fighter, and we could see the mechanics right away that like this looks like something that can be competitive, uh, for yes. sure. And it was definitely like a uh, you know a spectacle. Mir, what did you think when you first heard about it? Well, like the first time I heard about it was like in, when we were in the hotel, actually. Oh really? Me... Okay. Yeah, and you showed me, you know, all the the footage and stuff. Yeah. And well, like I'm a big fan of uh, Dragon Ball fighting games in general. Uh, I always liked them, especially you know, playing with friends. But yeah, they were extremely like casual, basically. You know, just just to play for fun. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to delve into the mechanics, there wasn't much there. But this new one, yeah, especially because it's by Arxis, right? Like it makes you hope that you can actually get, you know, interesting mechanics in, like, a Dragon Ball fighting game for once. Yeah, so absolutely. I was really interested, for sure. And, of course, it looks great. And, you know, the characters are there, transformation and all. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely definitely was interested. And uh, I wanted to try it out. Sure. So, by the time we got into the hotel, uh, <laughs> I think that was at the point, Killy, if I last remember that... Uh, when they, we realized it was going to be playable at E3. Mm -hmm. So then I was no, like, okay, you know, full we, stop, guys. You know, like... No, no, no. We figured, like, just before we boarded the plane mm -hmm. on Toronto is when uh, is when we found out that it was going to be playable at E3. Oh, okay. 
So that's when we was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta shift plans now. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's basically, then I was like, I'm like, oh man, I was scrambling, right? Because I'm like, I was thinking, you know, I had everything planned to play Marvel and, and get everything tested, and, and you know, I wrote down notes on what I wanted to test and stuff. But mm-hmm. then for Dragon Ball Fires, I'm like, okay, we gotta squeeze this in now because this this mm-hmm. is huge, right? And uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> we went to E3. Uh, that was the first game we went to line up for for sure. And by the by the way, E3 was a nightmare this year. And the lineups were brutal. Uh, I think it took us our average amount of time it took us to play once. Uh, 20 to 40 minutes, I think. I think, yeah, 20 to 40 minutes uh, every time we did a rotation. They only let you play once. I actually got a funny story about that. Me and Mir <laughs> lined up first, right? And the first mm-hmm. time we got to play the game, uh, we were playing it. And then, of course, we were testing stuff, right? So, like, everyone just plays, right? But me and Mir were like, no, we're, we, we stood there. We started pressing all the buttons, t- testing all the mechanics, right? Like, does, can this happen? Can this happen? And then, of course, the timer is getting really low. And then uh, Mir was down to his last character. And I'm like, okay, last second testing stuff. And then all of a sudden, Mir's controller stopped working. Just oh, yeah. out of the blue. It just stopped working. Right? And Mir's like, oh no, but in my head, I'm like, yes, right? Because we're like, we can tell them it's not working. So we went to the dude behind us and we're like, yeah, his controller's not working. He tried to get it work. He was messing around with it. And he's like, it's like, okay, go back to the front of the lineup and, uh, you know, you, you'll line up and then we'll let you play on the next station. And then, you know, just a glitter in my eyes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> you know? I was super pumped about that. It was funny. I, I, was, I, I was asking that guy, too, because we've seen this guy so many times, right? Like, he got to the point where we were lined up so many times that he just knew we were eventually going to come to the front of the lineup again. And so I started talking to him uh, and asking him, you know, like, you know, uh, can this, can, uh, like, how does the combo system work and stuff? And, like, the poor guy obviously didn't know anything, right? <laughs> and I could tell, but he, he didn't give up, though, Kelly. He was trying to explain the best way he can without admitting that he doesn't know what i'm talking about oh, so i was using like you know fighting game terms and stuff right but he still tried it and i i felt bad for him like i knew right away right and i'm like yeah. i'm like well so i'm like don't worry about it i'm gonna i'll, I'll figure it out myself right don't want to spoil it so I, I let him off the hook but i, I could have just stood there and, and let him keep going <laughs> and dig <laughs> himself into a hole uh yeah so um yeah Killy, like what do you think when you finally got the hands of it on your hands on it i mean um it played really well for yeah. the most part. Like the, you could tell it was really solid. Um, mm-hmm. I was just trying to figure out like the. I was trying to get a feel for the movement, like which which arcs this game did it feel familiar to, um, with or similar to. Yeah. And then I played a lot of the uh, old uh, Dragon Ball Z fighter uh, fighting games uh, for the SNES, right? So, yeah. like the Tenkai Ichi Budokai series, and then there was like that that other one i can't remember there was like more traditional 2d fighter mm-hmm. so i'm like Just okay well okay. no there was one more there was like another one i can't remember what it was called though there i remember there's like four fighting games on the SNES. anyways um but yeah the, the movement felt nice the neutral game uh was pretty fun mm-hmm. and then it was just kind of like testing the assist and stuff like that mm-hmm. and and then trying to get a feel for like the combo system um see if there were like gatlings and stuff basically like i tried to apply all my arxis and pras db uh dbz fighting game knowledge and see like what worked mm-hmm. and by the way guys you, you're gonna you're gonna he- hear achilles say zed a lot and i know it's gonna trigger you guys because i say yeah. zed, even, even we're though we're canadian. both canadian we're supposed to say zed just so you guys know <laughs> I'm pretty but, sure the rest of the world calls it Z. Even I'm, I'm pretty Japanese sure version, they like, call it Z too. I'm pretty sure like Dragon Ball Z changed like my life because <laughs> when I heard the Dragon Ball Z intro, you mm-hmm. know, where it constantly says Z, mm-hmm. it like it like fucked with my head, and now that letter <laughs> is now known as Z to me. Just was because that, of that the, anime the U.S. opening or was that the Canadian? Well, opening? I watched it on YTV, and I'm pretty sure it's still Z on YTV. There, there's like two different openings. One was like that that rock. Yeah, version. yeah. Both really good, by the way. Both. <laughs> no, no, they're <laughs> both godlike. Anyways, so yeah, Canadian, Amir, what, I think like... the Canadian one was pretty ass. Though. I never experienced that. <laughs> oh man, it's still, it just it still doesn't beat the original Japanese one. Oh, chala Ch- hit chala, man. Oh That's man. The best. <laughs> too biased anyways uh mir so yeah like what what was your like feelings basically after you finally got your hands on the game like well it definitely it definitely was an interesting game to to play because it felt like a mixture of like multiple uh well not genres but like multiple different games you know the, yeah 
Yeah. Like the, the the neutral game definitely felt fun because of you you know like really high mobility and you know the homing dashes and all of that. Then you mm-hmm. have all of your special moves that are you know signature moves from the from the anime and stuff like Goku's Kamehameha and you have their air version. Like it gives you quite a bit of freedom. And then yeah, we were trying to figure out the, the various combos and stuff. Yeah. And we went like more in depth on it like as the you know the we played more and more and discovered more things so it's it's like it's the beauty of discovery really that's what made it so interesting right because it's just a completely new game that we don't know almost anything about so just finding out what worked Mm -hmm. and what uh yeah felt refreshing i'd say yeah you guys so, are lucky. You got to test with each other. I had to play with randoms. So. Oh, it's so funny too. It reminds me because like we were in the lineup and there was three of us, right? There wasn't mm-hmm. four at the time. I, I don't know where Jim was, but me and Mary, like we're, we're, we're figuring out as we're lineup, like, okay, so who's going to play by themselves? Because the way it works, guys, in, in the lineup at E3 is that if you're by yourself, they'll assign you with someone that's by themselves as well, right? So like this girl would come by in the lineup. She'd be like, who here's single? Who here's single, right? And, and uh, we were really close to the front of the line at that point and for some reason i don't know if it was your brother kelly or jim but someone came up to you and started arguing with you because you didn't know where you were or something <laughs> oh, yeah. right and then of, you go into an argument with them in the line and then me and me were just standing there waiting and then she's like who's single who's single and then as you were arguing arguing kelly i just pointed at you at the back of your head like i looked at her <laughs> and i pointed back your head and then she just grabs you and the side you with somebody you're like in the middle of an argument you're like what's going on and you got put to a station <laughs> And then me and Mir, we're, we're testing more stuff out. That was really funny, man. But, yeah, like, at the starting, it, it took us a while to really, like, test things. Because we were really, really running down that damn timer when we were testing stuff. But, you know, after uh, I got sick, you know, you guys were able to get into the VIP room and then really do some, you know, testing uh, without Not having to Not even, to be line. honest. We didn't, yeah. even though we got into that back room, we barely got the test. The lineup even there was, like, um, big enough that, that you don't want to be like occupying it too much yeah because all the other yeah, media and stuff there. yeah or stations inside i think and they were basically always occupied by other yeah people. well it didn't help that the two back stations were like oh. bo <laughs> you, you couldn't play on the two back stations without like getting hit by bo and it was too much for me to handle in I'm the vip like, room <laughs> in the vip room what the hell? It was, it, it was like, I don't know, man. There was just like these two people there. And then I'm like, oh, the back, the back uh, stations are this packed. Well, that, well, that's like the ultimate strategy, right? Like, uh, I, yeah, yeah maybe up, it was strategy. I don't know. All I know is like, oh, they're less packed. So I tried to line up on the back stations and I got hit by a fucking stink Hadouken, man. And then you, and you did like, a backflip. You did a backflip. I'm just like, it's like, okay. You know, in the cross Tekken trailer with Marduk and then he gets hit by poison's like fireball and then you just see him standing and he's like ah, he's, i don't like, remember that at arm, all <laughs> his arms are like flailing back and I stuff he's, that up, the dude. Fireball. he's like ah. for the people <laughs> that, that know they me. know the context now yeah. that, what that was me when i got hit by the bo man <laughs> what a comparison it was just oh god that's so that, random that's you guys happened. never told me about that that's uh. so random it was so minor, but yeah, I basically got hit by that, and then I'm like, no, I, I'm gonna go line up on the front stations again. <laughs> yeah, where everyone was, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next topic here. This is gonna be a big topic because there's so much uh, to talk about here. But basically, I want to talk about now the game's visual, the sound, and the presentation of the game alone. This is like what the majority of the people know just by watching it, but seeing it in person is uh, definitely definitely different so i don't even know where to start this but i guess let's just begin with the visual of the game um as everybody knows this game is only 20 percent complete at the time that we played it and it already looks amazing right um the the guilty gear engine as far as i know the guilty gear engine is unreal 3 right so this yeah, one is and unreal, it's unreal 4. 4 so they upped it and it looks gorgeous it looks so faithful to the anime it's it's ridiculous so the Guilty Gear engine, um, in layman terms, I know I'm going to get this wrong, but just the mm-hmm. idea of it is is it's, it's still 3D, 3D models, but it's yes. drawn sprites onto 3D models, right? Or am I getting uh, that wrong? I don't think they drew sprites over it. I think it's literally just 3D, and then they poured a lot into like manipulating the 3D models. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's 3D models with uh, 
like a peculiar shading, basically. Like I have to watch the have, GDC thing. I'd have to re- yeah, I'd have to rewatch have to that, watch that thing again. Interview. But because, anyways, because if you look at well, just briefly, if you look at a you know Guilty Gear mm-hmm. when the round ends and you see that the camera is turning around, right? Like yeah. those are not sprites. You can see that yeah. those are 3D models. Oh, for sure. Like it's, it's the same thing here. And that, that's one of the benefits of using this type of engine. And another thing too, because of course Dragon Ball, like you want to have this big cinematic look, right? And they, wanted, they want to maintain that DNA, right? From the previous games, for sure. And yeah. um, another benefit is, is the lighting, right? So when you have sprites, it's really hard to make that lighting because you have to obviously redraw it, right? But with 3D mm-hmm. models, uh, you can when you're doing like key attacks or something really up close, the, the you know the characters light up and it it just looks amazing. And, and if you guys have been paying attention to all the Dragon Ball Fighters news, just that screenshot on Future Trunks alone, just seeing the explosion, the lighting off of off of his oh, face, gorgeous. it's it's amazing. Like from a single screenshot, I mean the presentation on this game is is, is absolutely through the roof. Um, uh, I think almost every single attack, special, super, everything is faithful uh, to the manga and anime. Um, it's straight from it. It's it's crazy uh, yeah. how much attention to detail they did. And... It was, uh, like, all that lighting effect, that was added to Guilty Gear Rev- uh, Revelator 1, right? That's when so it first came in, that, right? Yeah. Like, all of that, yeah, all of that paid off with, uh, with DB Fighters. It's just, all you can see all the lighting... And all the techniques they used carry over, and it really shows how how nice the game looks in action. Yeah, I remember you were showing that stage. I don't know what stage it is, Killy, but in, in Guilty Gear, it's it's like I don't know if it's a Slayer stage, but it's the one where there's like it's like dark. You're in kind of like this castle, and there's like a, a fence, and then there's uh, candle lights on the left and right. Yeah, yeah. And then as you approach the candle, uh, the candles, the lighting was very dynamic, right? And yeah. Even when you do like um, Soul's Gunflame. Uh, and it's really apparent on the darker stages. So yeah. you do Soul Gunflame, you can see it brighten up the area. But when the character model's close to the to the Gunflame, yeah. it really lights up the character. So you have this really dynamic lighting um, on all of the uh, various effects. And it's just like, holy crap, this game looks even more gorgeous. Like, I don't know how they did it, but they made the game look even more gorgeous than Sign. Yeah, it, it sounds silly when we talk about it, but it really does make a difference. It really does. It just shows attention to detail, right? You yeah, know, yeah, especially that extra light, especially right? when you when you see things moving, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like it it feels more natural, you know. You you feel more invested into a game because it's a uh, yeah, it's just because it just looks so, it's presentation, right? Presentation is yeah. really important. Extremely um, important. even the even the sound effects, right? All the sound effects are accurate to the anime. Um, the teleport sound effects, the hit sound effects. Uh, mm-hmm. Like fire, all the fireball stuff like that. They're all, um, all faithful to the anime. It's just yeah. Like, it seems it seems like they got the original voice actors too. Yeah, they got all the original voice actors. You have Norio Wakamoto reprising his role as Cell, the original voice actor for Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, all that stuff. So they're all there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's pretty cool. Like everything's so faithful. Even the attacks are faithful. Like from my experiences playing it at E3, because I'm playing with randoms most of the time. <laughs> Sorry, um, Kelly. <laughs> they were, they were like you can see the stark difference, right? Like. The, the people who are just playing it because of their fans of the franchise, they recognized all those little details, right? Like how close it was to the anime. Mm-hmm. And they're just like smile from ear to ear, man. They yeah. were just so <laughs> hyped. Mm-hmm. They were just so happy with like the presentation of the game. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't know how to play. They're just smashing buttons or whatever. But oh, like they're course. seeing all the effects. They're seeing all the attacks and stuff like that. And they're just like, oh my God, this game looks gorgeous. And they're having a blast. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, like, I am a fan of the franchise. Like, I did watch all of the original um, TV series uh, when I was a kid and stuff like that. But, uh, <laughs> like, when I'm playing it, I'm thinking from a fighting game standpoint, and I'm just like, okay, yeah. ha- let's break this down. But even I was, like, noticing all the little details and stuff like that. So I couldn't help but, like, um, be overjoyed as well with all the um, fan faithful stuff. But also, like aspects of the fighting game like that's close to Arxis fighters but also close to like marvel 2 and mm-hmm. stuff like that so i was just like oh man this game is going to be like amazing when it comes out and it's like polished even further yeah like when, when i grew up i listened to the, all the english voiceovers and stuff so it wasn't as familiar to me but like when we were standing there on the line they had the music blasting on the stage 
And yeah, the, if... the only thing I had an issue with is the music, actually, because the music isn't uh, from the original TV series. It's like um, it looks like it sounds like it's original, more like Arxis style of music. Mm, okay, but like when you're we playing um... the game, if you had your eyes closed, you it just no, you're playing a Dragon Ball game. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it had it's that the music. Through. It's the music that they use for most Dragon Ball games. Like it's um, as in it's uh, that kind of like hard rock with anime like, music. <laughs> No, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it, it really isn't anime music at all. Yeah. But it's not. It's not from the series, though. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's not, not. It's not. It's not from the original series. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Like it's a. It's original soundtrack, but yeah. With with the other uh, video games of the franchise, they always uh-huh. use this like style, this genre of music. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's why it feels so familiar. familiar right? It has a bit of Arxis's flair to it. Yeah, um, as well from what I from what I heard, but I really wish they took the the original music from uh, the TV series because there there's funny there's like people who made trailer um, took the match footage and they spliced in the actual music from the uh, TV series like the original TV series uh-huh. and um, and it works so well like it's just amazing because all the sound effect sound effects are from the anime like they were so accurate mm-hmm. that with the original music it actually looked like you were watching like an episode from the TV series or something because the music yeah. and the sound effects and the visual presentation, it all works so well together. And you're like, Oh man, that's so sick how it just works. Like it just yeah. feels so right. It it's, I think it was a really good idea for Bandai Namco to go to Arxis specifically just for the anime style game. I think it, it really works out. Um, even if they did go to Capcom, I think Capcom was too busy with Marvel anyways. Yeah, but this is really good because I really, I have like an agenda to really push out this Guilty Gear engine and have every fighting game use it, and um, you know, hopefully this game <laughs> is extremely successful and more fighting games just start to use it. You know, I, this is the engine <laughs> I want everything to use. The only downside of this engine, I think, is costumes. Pretty much, um, I think it's really difficult to make costumes for this well, kind of engine. The other thing is that not a lot of people like the. The jaggy animations, like really low frame rate animations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's too. Yeah, it, it's a uh... yeah. It it's depends a on what you choice. like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I really wish like. King of Fighters used this engine, man. It could have been so beautiful <laughs> with King of Fighters. Dude, KOF thirteen <laughs> still mean... looks amazing though. Yeah, KOF like I love that. Fun. Yeah, I love KOF thirteen, but it's a lot of work. Oh yeah, for KOF. It, it really uh, is. how they did yeah. KOF thirteen. But I mean, it, the the compromise if they wanted like easier development, yeah, the Guilty Gear engine would have been perfect for it, right? Like, yeah, uh, I don't want to derail too much, but the, uh, you yeah. saw the like when they redid the the Street Fighter sprites with the KOF thirteen engine. Yeah, oh, that, that looked, looked so good. That looked really good, actually. It that did, really and good. yeah, it looked really good. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> so. You know, it's funny, um, with the sound, uh, when me and me were playing, uh, did you notice those stations? They were so damn loud. I had to turn, <laughs> actually I had to turn it down. Well, it was funny because every time there. the guy wasn't looking, like, I would look at me and I'd slowly turn down the speaker <laughs> every time it got because... to the station. It was so loud, dude. It was my yeah, ears were reading. The, the thing wasn't so much the, like, fighting itself. It was in the menus. When you select the things, it just, like, the music. The, the, this really piercing sound, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, so, blasted your ears off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, more presentation stuff. Uh, like I said, the the attention to detail. Um, uh, in like when you kill someone with a super in this game, like when you get a super kill finish, like the planet yeah. literally explodes. <laughs> it's so crazy. So and then you get a stage transition. Too. I'm pretty like, sure every single changes. super, every single super. Uh, has some kind of cinematic finish if you happen to kill an opponent with it. And yeah, it'll literally like, zoom out, show the planet, and show like <laughs> at, not the bird's eye view, but whatever yeah. view of the planet and exploding. And then like you said, Killy, it goes into a full stage transition. I think it was like that in the other Dragon Ball games, right? But... Uh, uh, not, not all of them. Not really. No? Okay. Them. Okay. It, de- it depends on the game, basically. But some of them had it. But like, if you're somebody who doesn't understand like fighting games and you're watching this, it's just so wild, right? When you when you see stuff like that, it's it's so yeah, funny. When you, it, it, looks, it looks cool. Yeah. Like the, you could argue that you know maybe the defenders of the earth shouldn't blow it up, but <laughs> that's it's, it's just you're, a, you're like when you see it. when you see Boo do his super and he wins with that, and you just see this huge like mushroom cloud or whatever. This yeah. Dome. Yeah. 
this explosion yeah. grow and grow on the planet's hilarious. But then you see like one of the like maybe Goku does Kamehameha and he kills a fit, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just see the planet and then this beam just slowly <laughs> Extending out from the planet, it just keeps going. going. You're like, oh my god, it's so wild. And it it doesn't interfere with interfere with the gameplay either, right? No. Like it only happens on the KO. So yeah, like at most, it kind of kills a little bit of momentum, but yeah. it's it's fine. It's just a cinematic finish, yeah. yeah. And, and the and the Dragon Rush uh, launcher, we'll, we'll we'll talk more about that later. But when you the launcher in the game, basically when you knock them up, they you shows like the camera angle goes you know from ground to air, and yeah. then the character like swirls towards them. And like I said, it doesn't interfere with gameplay. It's just these little things, right? That it's it, it's yeah, kind of like really the, nice. the the dust attack follow yeah. up, right? It's just yeah. a bit slower. You know, you have more time to look at things, basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, pretty much. Um, even though like our reception, obviously we we love the game, playing it. Um, everyone else from the outside, uh, the reception has been insane. And uh, when you guys walked into the back of the VIP room, you guys saw pretty much the mountain of E3 awards that the game has received. Yeah, and they were adding more while we were behind there. It wasn't just like, oh, that's it. There were just more, ke- uh, more kept getting uh, tacked on to the, to the machine. They just kept walking up and pinning yeah, up the awards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were, they were like trying to figure it out. So they're like, okay, we need a ladder or something like that. <laughs> just, like, try to pin it up to the top. Yeah, they're like, find space. People were taking photos like crazy, and and remember, crazy. this is based on presentation alone, yeah. alone, right? Like they talked about basically like what they want with the game and such, but really they mostly just talked about like how they're gonna you know be faithful to the series, what they want, their goals. But really, everyone is basing all of this on presentation alone, the visuals, the sound, everything, and it, it's 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 really crazy for a game that that's this unfinished. To yeah, to look this good crazy and... for a fighting game in general. Yeah, like, fighting game one. to get this many like, three awards. Yeah, but it's like presentation and strength of the IP really shows. Like this game might like you know like I said if it's if it's as competitive as we hope it is like this might uh, be one of those games that kind of bring the communities together. It like bridges so many different communities. It could bridge the Marvel community. It could bridge uh, mm-hmm. anime fighting community. Yeah. Um, you might have an influx of like those casual Dragon Ball fans, or like just Street Dragon Fighter Ball Four fans. did, man. And it, it's yeah, yeah. This this could be big, right? What what the hell did Gutex say again to you guys when you were in the oh, back? Oh, he so when so when they were taking a <laughs> picture of the uh, of all the awards, he's like, he's like, remember this moment? <laughs> it's like this is a a huge step forward or something, something oh like that. Oh my god. <laughs> You really say that? <laughs> Something but, like yeah. that. No. It was it was pretty profound when you think about it because one, it's a fighting game getting all those um, awards, so you wouldn't really expect that. Maybe he already knew because you came from the future and he knew he was going <laughs> to be so successful. So he was just hinting you guys. That must be, must be the, what happened for sure. <laughs> all right. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about just on the presentation, visual sound, anything else? No. Nah. Okay. No, it just looks great. All right, moving on to another big topic. Um, let's talk about the game format now. So basically, what kind of game it is. Uh, man, I don't even really know how to start this. Killy, you, you can try if you want to tell me about the format. <laughs> okay, it's 3v3. Um, so it's like Marvel styles, Marvel 2, Marvel yeah. 3 style. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, you can tag in and out of your characters. There are assists. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, the assist system is way more... Um, free than Marvel Two or even Marvel Three, because uh, so? you can call uh, you can call them in the air. Like you can jump around. Oh yeah, you can call yeah. the assist in the air. Um, let's see. Uh, there's DHCs, um, and that's when you do a super, and then you can tag in your character with their super, and yeah. be able to switch your character safely, so to speak. But it's not just limited to like in the middle of a super. You could like with an attack and then tag in uh your assist character and have them do their super right away mm, so okay. there's a little bit more again more more less restrictive options mm-hmm. um of that mechanic there's no thc where you can call both um assist to do their where basically everyone does their super all at once there's yeah, none of that as far as i know mm-hmm. but you can do like um double 
DHCs, whatever, triple hyper combos where you can go DHC into another DHC. So you go super into another character's super into another character's super? Correct. Yeah. And you cycle uh, through the characters that way. What? I'm just saying you cycle through the characters. Like every time yeah. you switch the character, they are the point character and then it keeps switching. Yes. Okay. Um, what else? All three characters have to die for uh, a match to end. So again, similar to Marvel 2 and 3. I noticed um, the timer was really long. Like really long. Yeah. Yeah, it was like 200 seconds or something. 200 plus seconds. Yeah. I think it was on the timer. I can't remember. And by the way, when the timer gets really low, it's really annoying, by the way. Oh. It makes a really yeah, annoying sound. It makes a very sound. annoying noise. And we hear we heard it a lot because obviously we're trying to maximize our play time. So you hear that <laughs> yeah. damn thing all the time. Yeah, it was funny. Um, so... Yeah, so it's basically like a mix of an Arxis fighter with Marvel 2 elements to it. Yeah. That's that's the best I can ex describe it. I'm hearing a lot of people ask, they're like, okay, um, I want to prepare for this game. What fighting game is the closest to this game so I can prepare for it? And, you know, I, I was thinking about that for a while, and I can't really pin a single game because I've it got really asked... does have a combination of things. I've been asked that question so many times from people in my community, and uh, and yeah, there isn't a game that no. will a single game that can prepare you for this. Um, I think it's its own entity. It bo it borrows elements from different fighting games. Yeah. So like, yes, you could play all those different fighting games to get a feel for how that works. Yeah. But I mean, the implementation of it in in Dragon Ball Fighters is is slightly different um, yeah. so yeah you may feel familiar with it but you still have to relearn it anyways within the context of the game so mm -hmm. like like i don't think you could play guilty gear or blast blue or persona 4 arena or ultimax to prep for the game like mm -hmm. yeah you might pick up on some nuances on execution like how to do instant air dashes mm -hmm. um how to use like the movement of an Arxis fighter um, that carries over, but then you have things like assist, the assist calls, timing of assist, uh, when to characters. use it, right? Yep. You would have to play Marvel 2 or 3 to kind of get a feel for that exactly. as well. And then the super dashes are similar to Arcana Hearts homing dashes. So you'd have to play Arcana Hearts to get a feel <laughs> yeah. for how homing yeah. dashes work, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't, you, you like you're just going to overload yourself if you're trying to prep for it. I mean, the game is only 20% complete. People need to cool their jets here. Yeah, like, and, and relax. Like, all these mechanics are probably going to change, man. Yeah, like, nothing's finalized. Relax. Wait until we, the <laughs> game's near completion <laughs> yeah. before we can even figure out how it plays pro properly mm -hmm. and then figure out what you want to do from there. I mean, trying to get on that train right now and prep for DVF when it's only 20% complete and it's not out till like, what, next year? <laughs> You'll be playing the wrong <laughs> game for, like, like, a whole year. Like, like, relax here, man. I know the hype is real, but, like, yeah. like hold on, man. Just hold on. I, in general, I would just recommend to play faster-style fighting games. Either play anime style fighting games or play like a Marvel style fighting game would be the closest. Marvel two would be more beneficial. Yeah, than Marvel, Marvel two. 3. Just so you can get used to constantly calling assists, right? Yeah. And that managing your team. I, I actually I would recommend Marvel two as well, um, or even Marvel three. But Marvel two is way more assist heavy. It's it's way way more like DBF is way closer to Marvel two than Marvel three in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now. <clears throat> Back to, like, you know, just the game format. Um, the way the assists work, because I don't really have a section on talking the, about the assists. So you call your assists. Um, you can actually call both your assists uh, in this game. Uh, yeah, 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 that's right. You can call both at once. That's that's not normal. Like, in Marvel 2 no, that, or Marvel 3, you, you can only call one at a time. And yeah. um, the only downside, the only difference is, is that when you call your assists in this game, um, the, the, the recovery of the assists is a lot longer than in the Marvel games. So when you call your assist, it'll take a time. But uh, Killy, if I remember, certain assists uh, recover faster than others. Yeah, it, it looks like the cooldown on assist calls are variable. So it's character specific, and they overall it feels longer than Marvel 2's cooldown on assists. Yeah, and then and then um, uh, when you call them, it actually shows a little timer on their portrait, yeah. so you know when yeah. you're able to call them again or switch to them for that matter, right? Yeah. And uh, for now, you can't choose your assist type, like in nope. Marvel Two, or Marvel Three. But I, I think I think they were saying how they might 
play yeah. around with that. Yeah, and and the assists, um, they're not exactly the special attacks of their characters. Some of them are like their key attacks too, right? Which we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. But they're yeah, they're not necessarily just a, a special move from that character's uh, move list, basically. Mm-hmm. And another thing too, um, Mirror, when you call it, when you tag your character, um, they don't just come in from the side, you know. Like in Marvel Infinite, they either run from the side. Uh, Marvel Two, they'll kick downwards in, right? But mm-hmm. in in uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, they 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 fly in basically instead. Yeah, they, I think you can tag in the air too, right? Uh, yes. Correct me if I'm and wrong. You, you, you get a homing dash basically automatically. Yeah, the super dash. So yeah. because the yeah the super dash is actually not safe, or at least for what we tested, mm-hmm. it didn't look safe. When you blocked it, mm-hmm. it uh, that means that it's not like it's not safe to tag in raw, basically, unless you're guaranteed to hit the Omin dash uh, in a combo, for example. Mm-hmm. Or it's, it's uh, cool though, like if you hit them with a t- raw tag, right? You can combo off of it because it, it it's just the super dash. Yeah, exactly. So like you'll see like these heated exchange in neutral, and then fireballs are being thrown out and. Mm-hmm. You can just raw tag super dash through and then punish. So yeah, it's like, it feels like the the raw tag itself has a, a purpose. Yeah, like tagging is not just like defensive, where you're like, oh, my character's almost dead. I need to get him out. I need to switch. But it's more mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, you can offensively switch your character and then keep uh, your combo going if you happen to hit him. Because like it's like you guys said, it's the super dash. So basically, if they're in the air or they're in movement, your character will actually home in as he's switching follow him mm-hmm. and attack him and if you make contact with him you can follow up with your air combo um from there so it's not like marvel 2 what happens when you take your character your character kicks in right and if you happen to hit the opponent with it they'll twirl in the air and you can air combo them from there uh and uh but if you block it your character you're dead in marvel 2 you're dead if you do wrong <laughs> take and they block it uh but this game like i said it's, it's a more offensive thing because you can even hit them even if they're in the air and you're taking and like you guys said um, you can also tag in the air in this game, whereas in uh, Marvel 2, for example, you can only tag when you're standing on the ground. So, uh, really interesting. Like I said, uh, the game is definitely inspired uh, by the Marvel-style games, right? But it has a but lot like, of differences as well, especially with it's anime. Like they, loos- they loosened up the restrictions that Marvel yeah. 2 has. So yeah. It's like definitely inspired by it. It's like, but like we're going to loosen up the restrictions a little. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about on the, just the game format before we actually get like really into the meat and potatoes of the game mechanics? Uh, the format, no. Mir? Mm, no, I cannot think of anything right now. Okay, okay. All right, so moving on, let's talk about this Dragon Rush mechanic. So uh, um, I should start off by maybe. saying that um, there's no throw in the game. You can, there's no like walk up to your opponent and throw them if they're just blocking Which is really odd, by the way, especially in these kind of style games. But instead, Mm -hmm. we have this Dragon Rush uh, mechanic where what happens is you'll press the Dragon uh, Rush button, right? And your character will flash for a second, like flash red. And then he'll dash towards the opponent. And then it's completely unblockable. And what happens is you'll go into this animation where you're you're in a scramble with him. And then you'll launch your opponent up like a dust uh, from Guilty Gear. And then you can start your air calm, your canned basically like air calm because you're really really high up after you hit them and Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like a combination of because when you're scrambling it's kind of like the all out attack from from, uh from persona Persona 4 and then when you launch them the animation everything is kind of like dust so it's really a combination of of a lot of things but um uh, remember when we were testing this the first thing we're like was like okay so this is an unblockable attack there's no normal throws in the game right so we're like, mm-hmm. can you react to this? And what happened was I got, I, I just crouched and blocked. I'm like, Mir, don't tell me when you're going to press the button. I'm going to see if I can jump out and react to it. And it's too fast. Um, I, I, I know I'm getting kind of old, but it, it was too fast. I, I could not jump, react and jump out of it. And um, mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense because um, in this game, you're not just going to be sitting like a duck, right? This is a very fast paced game. So um, if you catch your opponent really sleeping or being overly defensive, that's definitely when you want to bust out um, the the mm-hmm. Dragon Rush. Um, Mir, do you remember what stops the Dragon Rush, though? Yeah, another, I mean, uh, yeah. I was just about to say, another thing we, we didn't know at the time was that if you use the Dragon Rush and the other, uh, like, the opponent is doing a move, 
yeah. it automatically clashes it. Like basically, instead of going into this clash animation where uh, only one of the guys gets pummeled and launched, mm -hmm. um, they both like hit each other, you know, in that. It, it's like the classic. It's fashion. like classic DV's fashion, where they're just um, both attacking each other, but neither are landing any hits, and then <laughs> it goes back to neutral. Yes, and then yeah. and then they get reset to neutral. Uh, if both do a dragon rush, it's uh, the same thing. You get the you get the clash. I don't remember if you do a homing dash versus a, a dragon rush. Mm -hmm. I I think I I don't remember because the the dragon rush on the ground only hits opponents on the ground. And yep. the one in the air only hits opponents in the air, so yep. that's pretty specific too. Like they they want ways around it basically, but the m most interesting thing that we found out, and glad to share with you guys this like day minus whatever tech is that you can do. You know, after doing a dragon rush, you can do another one while you're in the air. <laughs> yeah. And well, apparently it's an infinite if you don't break it, so it's pretty funny. Funny looking, I'd say. Yeah, basically, the uh, mirror was just, just the spamming Dragon Rush. So you do Dragon Rush, you go in the scramble, you launch in the air, and then you go Dragon Rush again. And if your opponent doesn't stop it, you can do it. as it, It's literally an infinite. We got up over 200 hits, and we were laughing. I, I really should have recorded that, though. <laughs> it was it was really <laughs> fun. We could have done, done, like, a 999 hit, for sure. For okay. sure. It was good. But the, the combo counter changes to blue, indicating that it's a blue beat combo, meaning it's invalid, right? Like, yeah, that's it right. can be escaped. It's not a... It's not an inf it's not a true infinite essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, just to clarify again, when you do, um, let's say you're in the air and you do your dragon rush, you will dash towards the opponent. But if he's standing on the ground, the air dragon rush won't get him. So a ground dragon rush has to hit someone on the ground, and the air has to hit somebody in the air. And the main way to stop the dragon rush, the unblockable attack, is they have to do their dragon rush as well, or they have to actually attack you. Uh, as you're going towards them, like that's like the two main ways, basically. So, like I said, it's 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 a replacement of throw, and it's used to stop your opponent sleeping. And it may sound really powerful since it is, of course, unblockable, and you are running towards your opponent, and it is fast, fast enough that, like I said, I couldn't react to it when Mir did it. But it's a kind of a game. It's a game where you're not just standing there. You know what I mean? There's a yeah, there's a lot the, of stuff going on in this game. So, but you, I don't think it's accurate to say Dragon Rush Tech. It's dragon rush it's just any attack will tech a dragon rush so you don't so like yes a dragon rush will do that as well but it's not like you have it's not specific to that it's just any attack any normal attack of some sort will tech a dragon rush yeah it's yeah, a very they... it's a very common misconception it's like oh you need to go dragon rush to to tech a dragon rush that's inaccurate no i'm, I'm saying i'm saying that like the main ways to stop it is to do yeah. an attack or a dragon yeah. rush yeah and the other thing is that uh like you cannot i don't think at least you can react it react to it with you can't there's rush. definitely no way you can react to a dragon rush with your own dragon rush like the because that's, that's that the startup right because you have to have that oh um, yeah no that, yeah no way that red no way. spark no way right that that startup has that red spark just like 5d and guilty gear but to, to react to that, to that spark with your own Dragon Rush, you don't have enough Yeah, it's not like some kind of metagame where you're like, you're like, oh, he does his Dragon Rush, I have to do it. No, that's that's not going to happen no. for sure. No. You can literally just see the spark and then you just push like uh, Stand Light or 5L, yeah. right? And then you'll tech, you'll tech the Dragon Rush. It, it, it's it's like, like I said, it's used the same way as you use a throw, right? You're catching your opponent sleeping, being overly defensive, yeah. right? Yeah. Normally, when you walk up to somebody, they don't have enough time to react to the throw, right? They just have to see it coming. So, you know, Dragon Rush is almost the same way. It's, it's really interesting how they, 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 you know, they wanted a launcher mechanic. They wanted, like, this dust-like mechanic. But then they're like, okay, well, you know, we're not going to have throws. It, it's just, it's really strange. This mechanic well, is, is really... we don't know if it will have throws later on. But yeah, right now, there is no throw, and this is the closest thing to a throw. True. Yeah. I don't think are... they'll add throws to this game, though. I really don't. I don't think yeah. so either, but yeah. we, not, we, don't, we don't know. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. There are characters that have, like, unblockables, basically. Yeah, they have their are... own command grabs or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically, command grabs. Uh, Cell. Cell has one. He grabs you, like, full <laughs> screen, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> Who else? Well, I think Frieza... When he, Frieza has when, one. One, I think so. Frieza has another. Uh, I think it's. I think there. it's a hit throw though. Is it? Yeah, because it's during his auto combo where he does it. He. Uh, you're talking about the one where you. You know how he killed Krillin in the anime. Yeah. yeah Spoilers. Yeah. 
but he raises his hand and he literally explodes. Spoilers. Spoil spoilers. That was during his uh, auto combo. Series. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that there's some command grabs in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and uh, even those flash red. Before. There's actually a lot of unblockable attacks in the game. Actually, when you think mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, there's actually a lot. Uh, there are there are certain attacks that are specifically designed to be anti airs mm-hmm. that flash red and do not hit on the ground. But if That's you the, hit someone, the EX in... one, right? Yeah, we'll get to the special moves eventually. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah, those are actually unblockable. So because you can block in the air in this game, right? Like the game uh, lets yeah. you know, for the most part, what is unblockable because of that red flash. So so you can tell basically they're trying to. They, like, you know, part of being a competitive fighting game is that it has to be fair, right? In the sense mm-hmm. that, you know, you, the opponent has to have a chance. That, like, if it's unblockable, you, the way to balance it is to make it fair, right? So that red flash is, is like, you know, like a tell, so to speak, you know? Were, were Ground Normals air unblockable like other Arxis fighters? I don't remember now. Uh, uh, I don't think we tested the anti I don't think we tested it out. You're talking about, like, Guilty Gear styles, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, since there's no... I, there's no faultless defense mechanic mm-hmm. or whatever, so I don't. I'm going to think... assume you can, man. Like I, I think that'd be too crazy. Um, I'm, I'm like, going there's to no, assume there's you no can. mechanic to escape it. Like Arcana Hearts had the same thing, but they didn't have a faulty, uh, faultless defense or yeah. a barrier guard like BB, but they had um, homing cancel, so you could like guard cancel into a homing dash, and would have like a Jeez. like a brief armor period to kind of avoid those situations. Uh-huh. But but. Uh, DV fighters doesn't have anything like that, so I can't imagine ground normals being air unblockable. Mm. But I but I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> well, considering that there are like anti air specials that are that you know flash like unblockables, yeah. uh, maybe maybe they're just one to to use those instead, mm-hmm. or your sure. assist. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about on the Dragon Rush mechanic? Uh, no. No. No? Alright. That's basically it. Moving on, let's talk about the Super Dash. Um, this is, um, we also call it the Homing Dash, too, because that's basically what it is. Actually, guys, keep in mind, there's a lot of mechanics in this game. Surprisingly, a lot of mechanics. Enough that, like, on a joystick, like, the, f- the first four buttons, I- I'll talk about this in the controls more, but basically, you're, you any combination of two buttons does something in this game. Uh, when on the it's controller, basically like Persona like Arena. Or Persona Arena had a ton of mechanics, and it's all these two-button combinations. Yeah, right? a lot of macros, so, for sure. So DBF is exactly the same way. A lot of utility from different two-button combinations. So the Super Dash, um, it's mainly used for... Well, actually, it's used for a few things, but... Um, what it does, like I said, it's a homing dash where your character will fly towards your opponent and literally home in on them. Like, it'll kind of zigzag and whirl around if they're jumping or moving and such. And if you make contact with the opponent, um, you can follow up with a combo. Most likely an air combo because, you know, you're in the air in the first place. And if they block it, it's definitely punishable, as it should be, since, you know, people are going to be going wild with this button alone, yeah. right? They shouldn't be going wild because it is punishable. It, it really they will has... be going wild, though, Killy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because they want to get in on I their opponent. It's kind of like saying, uh, you know, people are not going to jump because it's so unsafe in Street Fighter. Whereas yeah. people like, are I know a lot of people shoes. are going to go ham on Super Dash. They're going to go ham really? on Super Dash like they go ham, like their spring shoes. Exactly. It's, it's basically like, like, you know what I mean? It's just going to be one of those mechanics that like, an, a casual or average player is going to use a lot. A lot, right? Because it gets them in. And then they're going to die. <laughs> and then they're going to die. Yeah. Um, and then... Another uh, thing we're... <laughs> and then another thing is that um, it's used to follow up with things that... Uh, launch your opponent or smash them against a wall so like if you have like a wall bounce kind of attack you use your super dash to follow up so if goku kicks the opponent he bounces off the wall you use your super dash to continue the combo because you dash towards him or if you do like a down heavy with goku it'll launch him up in the air and then it's not like marvel where you go down heavy and then you press up and then you jump and you pursue them Instead, you have to launch them and then do your super dash. I remember when me and Mira were first playing the game, I was so confused by that. Because I'm launching him, I'm holding up, I'm like, why am I not jumping, right? Because I'm thinking Marvel. And then I'm like, down up, I'm trying every up, but it's really, you just use your super dash. In every instance that you knock your opponent, he's still in hit stun and you need to pursue them. Uh, it's the super dash. 
And another yeah. thing too, uh, guys, is um, the super dash is used to uh, avoid like the key attacks, like the the beam or the special moves, right? Like it, it literally goes right through it, well, right? Well, actually, always... actually, I don't know about specials, but it's definitely for the um, uh, the key blast attacks. Mm -hmm. that I this is where it gets confusing because there's an actual button called special. Yeah, right? special attack. So yeah, it's like a fireball normal basically mm -hmm. but it's not a special move and that's where the terminology kind of gets um confusing right mm -hmm. but yeah you can use super dash to go through um that's that normal button fireball mm -hmm. to go through it and punish the opponent so it can be used as an anti-zoning uh tool as well anti-zoning mm -hmm. mm, i don't know anti-zoning per se because it, it won't it won't go through special moves. Like you can't use it to go through a special move fireball, mm -hmm. but the normal button fireball it uses to to go through that. Mm -hmm. I mean, like but, most of the special moves, like the beams or something like that, are going to be like slow, like slow, and you know keep your but, opponent still. But these key attacks are like really fast, right? So you need something yeah. if they go yeah. overboard, something to go through it, right? There's there's another mechanic to deal with that, but we'll go over that later. Yeah, on. yeah. And, and Frieza, but, like, a lot, even Frieza's normal, some of them are, like, literally projectiles. Like, he's a very zony character, Frieza. Yeah, yeah. But, um, actually, like, the Super Dash is very, very similar to Arcana Heart's homing dash. Um, you can't hit it, like, multiple times to speed it up like Arcana Hearts, but mm -hmm. you can, um, control it to, like, zigzag and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and like the whole concept of using it to pursue your enemy for combos, same thing as Arcana Hearts. Like Arcana Hearts, you would use, uh, you would use the homing dash to do that. The only the only major difference is that you can't cancel uh, into a normal from the super dash. It, it has its own hitbox, mm -hmm. right? And that's the only thing you can do with it. You can't cancel it into a normal or special or anything like that. But the super so dash in, in Dragon Ball Fighters does have its own hitbox too, doesn't it? No, no, no. Homing, like that's what I'm talking about. Is the is Dragon Ball? Ho um, oh, or kind of hearts? Sorry. It doesn't have a hitbox. A homing oh, okay, dash sorry. doesn't have a hitbox at all. Okay. You usually do it and then you cancel into a normal. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what you would do with it. But in, in Dragon Ball Fighters, you don't. It's not. It's different in that you're totally committed to it. Yeah. Because because the dash itself has a hitbox on mm -hmm. it. Mhm. Mm um. Am I missing something on the super dash? I, I just to clarify again as well. Uh, when you switch your characters, that's what we're talking about. This is your character comes in with the super dash automatically. Yeah, when you do a raw tag. Yeah. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you can only like if you do a dash on the ground. Say for example, you do a combo into a launcher and you do a dash into uh, from the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do another dash in the air, if I remember correctly. But if you do a dash in the air, you can only do one basically. So your air combos are going to be shorter in general. And that's the same if you're tagging in. Like, because the tagging actually counts as your use of a super dash. That makes sense. For that combo, you cannot do another one, basically. Mm -hmm. So you're only going to get a short combo if you uh, tag in that way and get a straight hit. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so when... Uh... There's going to be combos, right, where you're doing, like, an air combo and you literally switch your character and it's just as if they did their homing dash in an air combo and continue it? Did you guys test yeah. that out? No, because it's very, it's very hard to combo into a tag like that. Because, yeah, it's kind of, it's not that fast, right? Cause it's, it's not fast. It's not really that yeah. fast to actually combo I was just into brainstorming. It. Yeah, you, you probably need some special move that wall bounces or stuns the opponent. Uh, maybe maybe like vanish or something like that. Uh -huh. Vanish into a raw tag might work. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And and just to clarify too, guys, when when you when you hit someone with your dragon rush, when you guys are watching like the, the gameplay footage and you see that when they flash red dash towards them and launch them up and you see that swirl, that's all canned. It's all automatic. They're not really do. They're not doing their super dash then. That is actually like your traditional you know air combo style. But the the super dash is something you manually do. Um, anything else, guys? We're missing on Super Dash, or we're gonna move on? Mm, no, not that I can think of. Killer? I think that's yeah. I think that's it. Okay, that's so it now the the special attack button, the key fireball. Why don't you guys explain this? Uh, um, it's basically a normal button. Consider it a normal button, like an actual normal attack, but it's just all fireballs. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, there's a crouching and a jumping variant. And on the on the standing and the jumping variant, if you keep mashing the, the special button, they'll just continue to throw more and more fireballs up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. But not with the crouching one. If you try to mash with the crouching one, it doesn't shoot more fireballs. It's like, it's like I guess it, it could be considered like an anti-air of some sort. Mm -hmm. So it's a single it, it, button it, it, projectile that you could rapid yeah. fire on your opponent. And it's yeah. universal between all the characters. Mm -hmm. It's like short yeah. burst key attacks. They are like the, the command versions of them, I guess you could say. Like the jumping and the crouching one are unique for each character. Like for example, Gohan, I remember, is crouching special. Mm -hmm. Is this like short hop where... Um, oh yeah. Uh, the, um, like at the top of... Well, not the top of it. Like at the... When he's at the um, top of the jump, I guess you could say, he, he just throws a fireball towards the ground. So it's probably a move to get in. Maybe it's, I don't know, advantageous in blocks. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know, like, of course, the ins and outs of it. But they're, they're like commands, normals, in a sense. Uh, they're not universal. Or at least the, the ground one is. Mm -hmm. the, the normal one is. And yeah, there, like there's Kevin some unique said, properties. You can just mash it. Yeah. And you can really like bombard your opponent because, like I said, it's just a single button, and and yeah, you can. It's it's really fast, mm -hmm. and you can be really mobile and just start, you know, spamming it basically, and use your assist mm -hmm. to cover you. And then that's where we talked about previously. The super dash comes in. Where the super dash literally goes through it. These key blasts, it literally goes through it and hits your opponent. So they yeah yeah. But and can... there are other mechanics to deal with it. Of course, we mentioned vanish, and we were gonna talk about that later. Yeah, and also the back end special gives you a, a deflect that yeah. allows you to deal with it's, this. It's not a strong zoning tool. There's so no. many ways to deal with it. Even a regular special move fireball or an assist fireball mm -hmm. will beat it, right? Yeah. So I could see where, like, yeah, you could use it in conjunction with your assist, or yeah. you can like, and then the opponent will have to like counter assist call, um, and then use super dash to kind of get in, but you can't super dash through the their assist fireball, right? They'll get hit out of the super dash. Yeah, like you can't really revolve your game plan on just spamming it. I would say, like, it's a really good thing. Like, if someone's just starting off the game, if they want to do like some flashy projectiles right off the hop, but like, <laughs> I would see it mostly used for closing out a character. Like, if a character's lit, mm -hmm. and you're like, you need like one more hit to kill them, they're trying to run away from you, mm -hmm. right? And you need to stop them from tagging. Or uh, if there is like an, someone calls an assist and the assist is really lit and you need to kill him off, uh, things like that, like, and yeah, or use it to cover your own assist, right? It could be it could be a long range poke, like maybe you're too far away for uh, mm -hmm. a super dash to connect, say on a on a whiff punish, right? Mm -hmm. And you just need one of them still score some damage and you just use your uh, special attack. Mm -hmm. You can combo into it as well, so it's like. When you do like um, auto combo with the heavies, and it and you do the straight one where, where it knocks them into the wall, you can just uh, k um, key blast them, mm -hmm. and just rapid fire it. Right, you can combo into it that way. And that I could see that being like a good uh, bait against uh, counter. Well, I guess you can't burst bait because the that mechanic's not really a burst. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it now, but you know, you can you can do stuff like that where you can combo into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know if, if we don't know if they're like advantageous on block or stuff like that. Maybe it seemed kind of negative on block to me. Like if you rapid fire it, it felt like I felt like you were super negative on block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the the thing, right? Like maybe a single fireball is useful to you know trick your opponent to think that you're going to do the full thing and get away with murder, basically. <laughs> but you can remember, you can call your assist at any point. So you could go like one fireball, wait, and then you and then you can go another sequence with the fireballs where you hit it multiple times. Yeah, and, yeah sure. and then call your assist to cover you. You guys so are doing like some can... serious theory fighter right now. <laughs> I mean, th there's some there's some applications of it within the neutral game, right? But it has a mm -hmm. lot of weaknesses. That's the point. It's got a lot of yeah. weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's because it's universal, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's their way around it, basically. Anything else you guys want to talk about on special attacks? No. Nope. Key attacks? No, not really. All right, moving on. Let's talk about just, like, the base controls now and, and the combo system. So um, the base controls, uh, well, Killy, you said you, you 
consider the special attack as one of the base buttons. But basically yeah. it is, it's light, medium, and heavy attacks, and then you have the special button. So those are the yeah. four base buttons, right? Mm -hmm. And like, like I said, there's a ton of macro buttons in this game where, like I said, if you're using a joystick, you, only, you usually only have access to six buttons, right? Sometimes eight. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to use a combination, like literally the four uh, face buttons, any combination of two besides uh, diagonally, uh, it, would, it, would, it would do something. Some, whether it's a Dragon Rush, Super Dash, or Vanish, or whatever, right? And um, the light, medium, and, and heavies, uh, like for some characters, for example, uh, I think, I don't remember if it was, I think Goku's crouching light does not hit low. Like he'll do like a low punch. But then yeah. Vegeta's will hit low, like it's a crouching kick. I, I don't. One of the characters was like that, uh, yeah, for yeah. example. And then uh, did, Majin Buu, cool. for example, his uh, was it his medium attack mirror. His yeah. medium attack was actually an overhead. He'll like headbutt downwards. I think it was overhead. the second attack of his. No, wait, it was the first attack of the medium string. Yeah. Yep. Like starting with a medium. Yeah. So his yeah his medium attack is an overhead. So there's there's differences like that, guys. What I'm saying on on between the normal attacks of all the characters are slightly different from each other. But for the most part, like I said, it's it's those main three buttons: light, medium, uh, heavy, and then you have the special attack button, which we just talked about, which is uh, mm -hmm. your key. So there's also like a bunch of command normals and stuff in the game. Um, there's a universal overhead. What was it? Was it forward medium or forward? Forward heavy? medium, yeah. Forward six, medium, yeah. Six M. Yeah. So on top of that, uh, every character has a universal overhead, but we just could not find uh, any way to follow up that overhead with a combo. Um, do, yeah, do we try it was vanish? No, it doesn't uh, work. You can't cancel. You can't no. cancel anything off of the overhead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the I would imagine thing... that you eventually can because it just they're pretty slow. And in a I game think, like this, I would imagine you could. I think you need an assist call, honestly. Yeah, to that'd combo be off of it. I think that's the only way. You have to preemptively call your assist and then overhead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be a way. So, um, the combo structure of the game... We'll, we'll be talking about auto combos in a second here. But the combo structure of the game is usually just... You do a ground combo, and then you either launch them up, or you do a wall bounce, depending on what you're using. Um, the heavy attack, like if you crouch into a heavy attack... It will launch them up, and if you just do a neutral heavy attack, it will usually wall bounce them to the side, and then you do your super dash, and then you follow up with your air combo into a special, into a super. Um, it's pretty pretty close to like the Marvel style formula where you go ground to air to special to super. It's pretty much the same thing, and um, yeah. So the auto combo system, um, a lot of people don't actually know this, but there is a lot of auto combos in Dragon Ball Fighters. And um, the two main auto combos is mashing either just light attacks, which will, let, will go into a full combo, or just mashing medium attacks, which for, I think universally in Mirror, it'll go into a full combo and end with a super, right? Like, that's what yes. it actually I says on the I think, yeah, I think that's what we, we tested, yeah. And then the heavy attack does have an auto combo, but it's not quite the same as the other two. The heavy attack will go into your heart and then go into your wall bounce, uh, wall bounce and make you pursue them. But I think from there you have to go, you have to go back to your light or mediums to continue yeah, the air combo do, portion of it. If you do a heavy combo in the air, you just get what looks like a spike. Although we don't know if it's a spike, I don't remember if you recover like slowly or fast from that kind of attack. Yeah. So maybe you can come up. For so, different... I think there's going to be some controversy on this and, and some concerns on the amount of auto combos in this game. So, first off, these auto combos are, are, are really good. They're, they, they're you know, semi-optimized in the sense that it'll do a bunch of attacks, it'll go into a special move or whatever, like Frieza, for example, he'll do that explosion thing, and it'll literally do a super dash after and follow up. Like, we're talking from ground to special to air combo to special. Like, it, it, it's the full thing. Um, these are these are enough definitely for someone to just use and, and be able to win a match and the mediums are even stronger where they go into straight supers um, So and these auto combos don't just exist on the ground they exist in the air as well Like when you launch your opponent up you can do auto combos in the air Like it's the, the auto combos are very strong is what I'm saying. They're they're pretty optimized It's not like in Marvel Infinite for example They're very weak bare bones combos where in Dragon Ball Fighters are much more powerful and more optimized I would say so, Killy, like, what would you compare this combo auto combo system to? Like, what game? 
There is no game that's similar to that. Okay. Every every other fighting game that had an auto combo system, you should just smash A or <laughs> okay. jab or something like well, that. Well, let me ask you this then. Like in in Dragon Ball Fighters, right now in this part of the game, like we don't know. Like like I said, this game is gonna be changing all the time. So maybe mm-hmm. they just put in these auto combos just for some people to be able to play and experiment with the game, right? We don't know yet. Because there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of auto combos in this game. But there's there's specific animations that don't exist outside of the auto combo. And that's one so. of the things me and Mir tested for sure. And one of them, like I said, was Frieza. Uh, when you did his auto combo, he would go into that clutch where you grab Krillin and it would explode him and then he would super dash. Not, not Krillin, like just you know, referencing the anime. But you can't do that move manually. As far as we know, you cannot do that that special manually. And we thought it was um, a super. Because it goes full cinematic when he when he does yeah. it, so that implies that these auto combos is definitely a base part of the the system, and that's where we mix this casual and competitive uh, elements into the game. But what I was going to ask you, Killy, was uh, for m- most fighting games, competitive fighting games that have auto combo systems, they're used specifically for newer players to just be able to start in the game, right, mm-hmm. and be able to build upon that and learn the combos themselves, but in order for it to not interfere with the competitive scene, um, there are always some kind of downside to using it. Yeah, there is, the damage is usually scaled. Now, was Persona was scaled, right? Persona, Undernight, uh, Inbirth, those two, they scaled their uh, damage. I don't remember if King of Fighters 14 scaled the damage. I think it does, mm-hmm. but I don't remember. Um... I can't remember any other thing. I don't know if Persona scaled it, to be honest, because they uh, their auto combos also had specific animations. Okay. But I'm fairly I'm fairly certain it scaled the damage because it would go into a super. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure the damage was scaled on Persona auto combos. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? What else? That's the only combos? ones I can remember that that had auto combos. Yeah. Um. Well, Guilty Gear had like it's not it's it's a mode. It's not really stylish mode. Stylish yeah. mode. Uh, and that that was like I don't know if they scaled it, but the, I know you take more damage. Yeah, you take more mode. damage, yeah, and it was really crazy. It's not just auto combos. It's like an actual setups and stuff. So that's definitely different there. Well, I guess let me ask you guys like how you feel about it, basically. Like Mir, how do you feel about there being so many auto combos in Dragon Ball Fighters? Well, the thing about auto combos is that I think that uh, as long as you have a combo system that supports other kind of combos, like other ways of basically, in a sense, expressing yourself, you know, by yeah. just selecting, no, not selecting, deciding to do different combos. And, you know, maybe the most optimized combos actually require like a little bit of execution. I think auto combos are fine, uh, but if you only have auto combos, and especially with the game right now, which we know is 20% complete, but still, uh, there is not a lot of variety with each character, just because the auto combos are basically the only thing that you have. So mm-hmm. you're just mashing buttons, really. So the like it, the combo system has to be definitely has to be a little bit deeper than that to be like a satisfying competitive experience are you concerned uh, well i mean a lot of people for example just to mention other fighting games uh, complain about you know street fighter 5's combos because they're very similar right like you have this optimized combo and that's what all players go for Mm -hmm. although it's not necessarily the case all the time Mm -hmm. it's still like a concern for a lot of people just you know even for spectators right yeah so um, uh dragon ball like is way more flashy and stuff so maybe maybe the auto combos won't be uh as much as of a big deal for spectators mm-hmm. but definitely for players you want something more like just pressing the same button over and over it's not satisfying enough so maybe they're going to introduce uh, you know, specific char- uh, like character-specific gatherings later in the development, and that's what I'm guessing that's going to happen. But yeah, it, it is a bit concerning. Like the game right now uh, is very new, and there are a lot of mechanics, but the combo system is 
not super interesting if it's only auto combos, basically. Gotcha. Killy? It's too restrictive. It's way too restrictive, the combo system. Um, like, the auto combos look nice, mm -hmm. but I need I need more depth out of it, right? And it's hard to really delve into the combo system but if uh, at E3, but it felt very restrictive. Mm -hmm. Um because there, there were like no gat, like you could, there were no gatlings basically, like guilty gear. They're chains, like light, medium, hard, but um, they're, they're like, there wasn't a whole lot of depth that I could see in there. Obviously, when you throw an assist and stuff like that and vanish the, and dragon rush, um, there's some variety there. Yeah. But then in the end, you're always doing that same like auto combo string at some point because mm -hmm. um, that's that's like the primary way to get the launcher or whatever like that mm -hmm. um so yeah uh i'm a bit concerned because i want more depth out of it but mm -hmm. also i have faith in arxis to at least expand on it later on because this is still considered 20 percent complete but it really Absolutely. it really depends on the direction of bandai namco right because yeah. if they want something sim more simplistic for um, the casual fan base, then yeah, that might that that could definitely hurt the competitive aspect of the game. Exactly, like Arx, it's not like Arxis has full control. Like they, you know, Bandai Namco obviously went to them. They wanted a casual game injected with competitive aspects, so they're gonna want to not make this completely hardcore, right? Yeah, and like based on the interviews, the director did say like they want competitive, and they said like, oh, the way we're making it competitive is the three v three thing, but it's like that's just not enough for me right yeah. The, yeah you have to be able to like stagger stagger the pressure and stagger and like be able to expand on the com combo system itself if mm -hmm. it's if every time you land a hit all you do is smash one of the auto combos and then and then you extend it with either an assist or whatever like that that's still not enough depth it's still the same mm -hmm. it's a formula right mm -hmm. so there's no way for players to really express themselves um in that kind of system right yeah, the, uh, like, the balancing act of accessibility has always been a huge headache, especially yeah. in fighting games lately. Yeah. yeah. So I think a very easy way to fix that is you do a Gatling system. And Blaze Blue is only four buttons, right? It has A, B, C, so light, medium, heavy, and then a drive button, which is character specific. Sometimes that drive button is not even an attack. It is a movement option or something like that, mm -hmm. right? So you can do you can do the exact same thing with dbf or blaze blue you have light medium heavy but have uh, gatlings have those normals do more than and then what they do right now mm -hmm. and i think that would easily rectify the situation mm -hmm. i'm pretty much on the same page as you guys like i am concerned that uh you know like you guys say you won't be able to express yourselves in the sense that uh you know all the combos will feel the same between all the characters and, you know, the auto combos are, are strong enough that you can just rely on them. So you find a lot of people just mashing buttons. And, you know, we, we want depth. We want, you know, you know, do we do damaging combos? Do we do resets instead, right? Um, we, we want all that depth in gameplay. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really hard to balance that, right? That accessibility. Because we are, uh, this game definitely has, is going to be bringing a huge community of casual players into it, right? And then the competitive players going into it are going to have certain expectations as well. And, you know, depth always matters in, you know, uh, keeping this, maintaining this game, having a long lifespan. And, you know, we all want to see this game at, at Evil next year. You know, we want to see this game <laughs> put at a very you, high level. And You need that skill barrier for the competitive fan base, right? Because yeah. it's... They're not going to like it if a, a random casual can go in. And if he knows a little bit... And all he can and uh, and the and uses the auto comp system because yeah. that's all you have. Yeah. And if he can win that way, that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? Because a competitive player is going to put way more time into it, and they should be rewarded over that casual player who only knows a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's it's all about you know having like the first floor, you know, have it as low as possible, but the roof have it as high as possible, right? So mm -hmm. just. The, the entry barrier should be low so people can get started in the game right away. But, you know, the ceiling has to be through the sky, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's just balancing those two is very, very difficult, as we know. So um, anything else you guys want to talk about controls and the combo system itself? Um, Before we talk about more mechanics? So the move, there's like more movement options than what we let on to. Like there's still, air, there's air dashes. 
There's regular the dashes. The regular dashes on the ground are runs. So if you hold uh, forward, um, your character will just continuously move forward. Mm -hmm. um, there's back dashes, air back dashes. Um, there's no double jumps. No, there is double jumps. Yeah, I don't know. And, and then there's super jumps, I think. Mm -hmm. And then yes. I don't know, and I can't remember if you can super jump and air dash and all that stuff, like Guilty Gear. Mm -hmm. But ba the basic core movement options are exactly the same as Blast Blue or Guilty Gear or Persona. So typical Arxis. Mm -hmm. Anything else, guys? Uh, mm -hmm. No. Okay, I got a section where we talk about other mechanics anyway, so if we forget anything. Okay, so next up we have the Vanish mechanic. Um, I think we tested this mechanic the least out of all of them, right? Because, yes. So it's hard to the... like remember when to use a Vanish. That was the... Mm -hmm. that was Mir, the do you remember part. what the button combination was for Vanish? It was mediums and heavies, if I remember correctly. Okay, medium, medium and heavy. heavy. Yeah. Alright, so basically the Vanish, what it does is the command, it costs one level to do. And uh, it will make you literally teleport behind your opponent and hit them. And can you follow up after you hit them? Yes. Um, if you cancel into it, yes. Raw, it's very hard to combo off of it. Okay. Well, you can still use your super dash to combo no, off of it. No, it tried that. It's very difficult off of raw vanish. Okay, well, so you're saying when you hit them raw, it, it's it's a different effect altogether. Like it, it's like it causes like some kind of weird wall bounce or like it knocks them really far away. <laughs> Um, like the the thing is because the vanish moves you behind them. Yeah, uh, they're usually not away from a corner, so um, like they always go the full length of the screen. So if you hit them on the ground, I can see why that would be hard to combo into it. Yeah, just because maybe they hit the ground before your super dash connects. But I'm pretty sure that if you hit them in the air or in a juggle, like in a combo, uh, it's definitely possible because in, you in a combo time. it was way easier to combo off of a vanish but in if you do raw vanish and you hit them out of the air depending on screen position it was difficult to actually continue the combo i had that problem at e3 so okay. if i tried to, if i hit them like mid screen with vanish and i try to super dash while they're in the air they could actually tech out okay so basically this mechanic has like two main uses so one if you just use it raw you can use it to get around things, right? Specials mm -hmm. or supers or key attacks, whatever, right? And instantly get in on the opponent. But like I said, it costs one meter. And the second part of it is kind of like a combo extension. So you can do your combos. I can, you can vanish, cancel out of your specials or your normals, and you'll, you'll teleport to the other side. And this is basically the closest thing I can think you can is like a roaming cancel, basically. Yeah. It's like this game's roaming cancel. Combo extender. And it's a very... I would say DBZ way of doing it, right? Because you know, it, when they're in a skirmish, though, so they'll hit them to the ground and they'll teleport before they even land there and knock them back up, you know? Like it's got that very DBZ style way of extending your combos, which I really like. And uh, what you guys are saying, right? Because I didn't, I didn't test this as well as you guys did, but you're saying if you do it raw, so they're like, okay, if you're gonna do it raw, you know, it's gonna be more of opening your opponent up and, and stopping him from zoning you or whatever, right? And they don't, they don't want it to be something where it's like this, you know, you don't want to, this vanish attack is really powerful. You know, you don't want someone to literally just teleport behind you and start comboing you. But if you use it as a combo extender, you should be rewarded anyway since you did land your combo on the opponent on the first, in the first place, right? And you're spending mm -hmm. a bar to extend your combo further and do more damage. And I think this is key. Uh, this mechanic is key for the game to have more depth, right? Is this, this vanish mechanic. Yeah. Yeah, it allows yeah, you to sure. really convert off of straight hits too. Like, um, let's take Frieza's assist. It's, uh, it's that special move where he basically creates this little pillar, uh, like a projectile pillar. And then on hit, it launches. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to combo off of it because it knocks them into the air so high. Mm -hmm. So the only way to really, like, really combo off of it, um, off of a confirm, is just to vanish. Mm hmm. Anything else on, on the Vanish? I, I can't say much, guys. I don't know really much about it. Like, is um, it well, it's, it's good at punishing Fireball. So, like, if they try to raw super, raw special move Fireball in neutral, Vanish is just an instant. One bar, instant punish. But, by the way, it takes one bar to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just a way around things, like we said. So, um, if you want to use it raw, it's basically like a full screen with punish. And 
Um, I'm guessing that as the meta evolves, uh, there are going to be setups where you can bait it and then punish it because I'm pretty sure it's um like it's punishable block. Oh, and keep in mind it's a cross up, so you have to block it the different like you the, can the, like uh, crouch it too or something. Like I'm pretty sure like I know I played all I Joe and it's like we with that vanish a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely want to use it a lot. It's so fast. But yeah, you do teleport behind the opponent, so you do have to worry about the, the cross-up if you're going to do it raw. So, can mm -hmm. you use it multiple times in one combo? Uh, don't think we tested that. Yeah, no, but remember. pretty sure you could use it multiple times in a combo. Oh, but really? I think, scaling, I think scaling would be like... Oh, yeah, of course. Effect. And the it's meter more, cost. Yeah. It's more about the fact that you can only super dash once. Okay. Or, or twice, I guess, if you do it from the ground, right? So you cannot follow up the second vanish, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you could dragon rush after a vanish, though. Yeah, but the dragon rush doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> like, it's really, really short and slow. Mm. It does combo, though. There's videos of it where someone would do, like, an air combo string, vanish, and then it would wall bounce, and then they land, and they go dragon rush, and the dragon rush combos. What? Then they, then they super dash, like, they get the super dash follow-up. And then they do whatever air combo. Oh, into send me a link to that. Kill. I need to see that. What? I never. But yeah, never... You I can thought definitely Dragon Rush, do no matter what, can't combo. Like no, in, in the sense that it, they can't avoid so it's, it. So it's basically, if you have the corner to your back, and you vanish, that you all bounce, and you can get like extended combos. Basically, that's what mm -hmm. you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's like a corner combo, so it would make sense. Uh, I think they did it mid-screen, that, that one particular combo I was talking about. Yeah, Pretty remind sure me to send me that link. Though. I'm curious now. I'm curious. Yeah. Anything else on Vanish, guys? <laughs> uh, no, it's, yeah, no. it's basically RC. But it's a really important mechanic, for sure. <clears throat> this will be <laughs> yeah, definitely. one of the most it's important another way to, another way to spend your meter. Yeah. So, yep. it's important, for sure. You get a lot of meter in this game. Seven bars. Mm-mm. All right, let's talk about um, the spark mechanic. What, what is the actual name of it? Is it just called spark? Sparkling Blast? Sorry? Sparkling Blast. Sparkling Blast. Yeah. So a really huge common misconception is that this is a burst mechanic, but it's not. It's not at all. Nope. Kili, you want to explain this one? Um, it's probably closer to Persona 4's One More Burst or even x <laughs> <said from burst. laughs> Marvel 3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one more because you can combo into One More Burst. Mm-hmm. Um, in Persona 4. Okay. So what it is, is like you activate it. You only get one per entire match. Like you can only use it once. Um, when you activate it, it it basically has a hitbox, like a burst, right? Uh, and then it powers your character up, so they do more damage, but it also regens um, this game's version of gray health, which is blue health. Mm -hmm. So it regens that, and then it just powers up your character. Doesn't change their frame data or anything like that, um, or doesn't doesn't change their speed like X Factor. Uh, when you lose more characters, that the icon for Sparkling Blast starts to like glow, and then when you down to your last character, it's like flashing and it has like a really very noticeable visual effect to it um, when to show that you have it. Now, I don't know if this means that as you lose characters, that Sparkling Blast gets powered up like X-Factor. It does. Or if it's just... It does? Okay. Yeah, we tested it, yeah. Okay, so you'll, you'll do more damage. So it's it's this game's version of a comeback mechanic, but it's not as stupid as X-Factor where your frame data is just <laughs> Everyone like always compares comeback mechanics to X-Factor. <laughs> well, X-Factor is so too OP. Yeah, it's well, so it, is, it is really similar to X Factor in the fact that it heals you and it gives you increased damage, but it's not like it doesn't. It's not, it's not a win change button. your character. Yeah, it exactly. It's not a it's not a freaking win button where all of a sudden you're you're sped up like crazy. Your friend gets <laughs> all and, all, and all thing... like plus across the board. <laughs> Nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, and the and the thing is, I uh, I'm pretty sure that the intensity of this sparking blast. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't change, but it's the duration that gets like a, a boost with you know the, the the last characters that you have. Basically. So you're saying it doesn't do more oh. damage, but it lasts longer when you're down to your last yeah, character. Yeah, and and the heal lasts longer. And I'll say the heal is actually pretty impressive, but because you can only heal the blue health, mm -hmm. you know, it's not as dramatic, basically. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Um, you can combo into it as well. Like yeah, it so has just its own hitbox. just to clarify, guys, once again, this is not a burst mechanic where it's used to break 
combos when your opponent is hitting you. Um, when you're in block stun or, or when you're getting hit, you cannot use this thing, this uh, uh, the spark. But as Killy just said, when you are when you are the one comboing your opponent, uh, you can use it to maybe extend your combos. Did you get any extensions, or you uh, just don't recover? In time? No, I just I brain farted when I tried to combo out of it. You can use it offensively, out. basically. Yeah, yes. definitely, definitely, you can use it as a combo ender of sorts. Maybe create a setup off of it just because they get knocked back. You know, it's just a knockdown basically. Yeah. So it's a safe way to activate it and still have advantage. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's a way to combo out of it and just yet yeah, and test them out. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised though if they change this into a burst though. I wouldn't be surprised if they make it so you can use it when you're when you're getting hit by the opponent in the future. Maybe. It's I just such a foundation the, uh, to anime fighting games. Like I think the game needs a burst mechanic, honestly. Yeah, sure. I think it, I think it would heavily benefit from having a burst mechanic. Sure. Mm -hmm. And and the downside is is that if you do use it, you are basically giving up your comeback mechanic. Uh, you know, uh, it's not yeah, you're forcing them to use it basically. Because he, especially because you only have one per entire match. Yeah. 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 It doesn't like recover. Like yeah, exactly. And um, and you you might be able to. Uh, have this kind of meta where you're you're baiting the burst basically you know mm -hmm. so that that would add some depth uh as well for sure wow, the burst bait meta is so fun <laughs> i love it i love it i love it when a game has that uh, i i personally hate combo breakers i hate any type of combo breaker just triggers me i hate it so much <laughs> But just... when you have a meta where you can bait it, like, okay. Yeah, can, I, I understand. Like, I know. I like, know. maybe with Killer Instinct, because it's such it's heavily ingrained into into combos, but at least with Burst, it's like once per a certain set of time. Right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the meta of baiting it is, is so fierce and Guilty Gear and Blast Flu, especially when you throw it. Yeah, yeah. When you, when you throw a Burst, man, get the biggest heart on ever. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate everything, man. Even in Mortal Kombat, I hate I hate combo breakers. I just I hate I hate it for, as a as a player and a spectator. You know, as a player, when you finally land, you're hitting your opponent, and then he just breaks it anyways. When you're like, let's say you had him in the corner, you're like, oh, you had this really nasty corner combo you're gonna do on them, and they they happen to break it. And or as a spectator, you know, the opponent finally lands a hit on them, but they happen to have a breaker, and it just I I just don't like it. And then I I understand what you're saying that you know in the anime fighting games, especially in Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear, you can you know, bait the burst, and it is exciting when you do it. I just, there are, you know, certain things where no matter what, if they burst, you cannot bait it and stop it, right? Unless you blow, like, a Roman cancer or something crazy, but I, I just don't like it in general. But that's just <laughs> my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> my personal opinion. <laughs> I can imagine the look on your face right now. <laughs> I'm just, I got, like, this smug smirk right now. <laughs> um, but anything else you guys want to talk about the sparkling blast? Uh, no, it was like one of the mechanics we least played around with because it was kind of straightforward, but yeah, well, it's yeah. also very limited. So we only had like one. Yeah, you can only use it once for. Yeah, match, and we, so man, but... we spend so much time on like, um, just the combo system alone. But yeah, the first thing we want, we wanted to figure out is is if this spark was a was a burst. That was like the first thing because we saw it, it looked like a burst, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, uh, the deflect mechanic. Not too many people talk about it because it's not actually on the instructions, the control scheme. I don't know, Mir, if you were mechanic. mashing buttons oh, or something. It's not? Yeah, I remember, I remember getting it. I don't remember if it... It's definitely not written down, though. It's just well, okay, there. Then... Yeah, it's definitely not written down. So, it yeah, Mir, you in want the to trailer. explain this one? This deflect mechanic? <clears throat> well, basically, the deflect mechanic is... Uh, like it, its uses are... Uh, well, tell me how to do it first. To, well, you do backhand special. Okay. So your special button, this, the same one that you use to throw key blasts, mm -hmm. that's what you use. Um, so you have basically two uses for it. Uh, the first one is if you're blocking uh, key blasts, you can press back and special and start this deflect and deflect the rest of the key blasts. You can actually do uh, it out of even... blocks then? Yeah. Like against yeah. fireballs? I know you yes. can do it out of normals. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it out of. Well, no, wait. Okay, so if you're blocking key blasts, you can deflect them. Like even even while while you're in blocks them, and you have really? to keep mash. Yes, and you have to keep mashing it to, uh, uh, you know, fully deflect them. And it's it's really nice that they go into the background, and, like destroy yeah, parts there's... of the background. 
That was really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that you can do is you can use it as um, like if there are strings that have gaps in it, you can use it as kind of like a push block. But it doesn't work while you're blocking. Like as in, it's not really push block as in, uh, you know, you spend meter to uh, push your opponents away, uh, your opponent away from you while you're blocking. It's more like, uh, kind of like a parry in a sense. Yeah. That yeah. resets them to neutral. So um, I think it's a pretty common misconception. It's like push block, but it really isn't. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I think this is a, a bit unintuitive at first, just because you need to know when you can press it, right? Because if you just press it randomly, you're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. or... So it probably, like my guess is that maybe the the strings that, like the the heavies, maybe they're safer on block compared to say mediums and lights, but have bigger gaps in them. So you can use this one to reset to neutral, for example, or maybe use it against overheads and stuff like that. Uh, of course, we didn't go super in depth with this. We didn't have a lot of time to fiddle around with it. It seems like scary to yeah. use. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, it, you, it is pretty scary. <laughs> you can only do it while standing, by the way. So you mm -hmm. can't do it while crouching. So you like you can mash it and block stun, mm -hmm. and if there's a gap in in their block string, then yeah, you'll push, you'll deflect that normal right away. Mm -hmm. But again, you can only do it while you're stunning if you try to you can't do it while crouching so if you're mashing it and they decide to go for a low you're gonna eat that low mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when, like when you're doing yeah. this mechanic and you're like holding back and just pressing special your character's like swatting his hand he's like yeah like that and like mm -hmm. the, it's not like a window like a parry guys it's not like you have to be like on the frame like when you, when your character's in that animation if you do a normal attack on him it'll it will literally just push him away right but like you guys just said, you cannot use this in block stun. It's not like a push block like Marvel, where you're blocking, you press two buttons, and you push them back. It's not like that. It's more like a parry. And the main use seems to be for key attacks, where you're literally swatting the fireballs away. And if he's doing multiple fireballs on you, you got to keep pressing it while holding back. And then, the, like you said, the fireballs go in the background, and there's explosions in the background of the stage. I think that's so cool, man. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only real uses we found for it, right? So yeah, basically. It just seems scary to uh, use I in general. I don't think you can deflect beam specials. Uh, I definitely, I definitely don't think you can do anything with beam supers. Otherwise, that'd be a bit too. Powerful. I highly doubt it. I think the main hmm. thing to stop beam supers is like vanish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And well, even even beam specials at this point, because yeah, it seems to work only with key blasts. Mm -hmm. Which is like the most important thing that you'd use it for, because mm -hmm. of the, the the key attacks. Like, you could say, why you, don't you just block them? But the key attacks deal some chip. Yeah. So, and and I'm guessing that if if you deflect the projectiles, you're probably <clears throat> not as I don't know is advantageous on block. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't even know how, like the frame data, of course. But I, I'm just guessing at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a way to avoid chip damage, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else, guys, you want to talk about this deflect mechanic? Uh, nope. No, not really. All right, let's talk about the specials and supers now uh, for the game. Um, first thing I should mention is that the special attacks in the game, the commands, are your traditional, like, core circle forward, core circle back commands, but there's no DP motions uh, at all, right? Yeah, there's nothing. There's, there's no yeah. To go forward. It's like go very basic, to. very basic uh, uh, commands. Yeah, the only yeah. exception would be uh, I think Vegeta's dive kick, and that's just down but, and. A... But that's a command normal. Yeah, but that's how I view it. Uh, Cell yeah, has one too. He's got yeah, like a forward, special. forward medium in the air, and it's like it's almost like vanish. He like teleports behind the opponent, and then mm -hmm. he does like this chopping attack. It's still like included in their like special move list because like, like that no, way we just know it's exclusive yeah. to that character, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like Frieza has like one down down input. And and mm -hmm. oh down down. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Come true. You know what's really funny? <laughs> I was reading the comments on the on the Marvel podcast video, and we know how we're making fun of Dante, right? And call yeah. him Dante. Someone call him Dante. <laughs> because of the, the oh. double downs. I, thought, I know. I know some people call him Dante. Don't take. <laughs> oh god. Anyways, yeah, we always gotta talk about Marvel every now and then. But um, 
Yeah, so also, uh, like we said before, guys, in the auto combo system, we we're starting, we were seeing some special moves that were exclusive in the auto combos. Now, like I said, we don't know for sure. It, they could be just unlisted commands, but as far as we know, there are exclusive special moves within the auto combo system. So, um, also for the supers, guys, the commands are not double motion. Uh, there's there's single motion, single quarter circle forward. You're just using um, the, the right trigger uh, on the on the controller because we're using Xbox controllers uh, for the demo stations. So, in terms of the special moves, guys, there's like two different types of special moves. There's ones where you use light, medium, or heavy, and they have three different. You know, they they get stronger and slower, just like special moves in Street Fighter, for example, and uh, or. You can. There are certain special moves that only use the special button, the key button, the S, and those have no different combinations. Obviously, because it's just one button. Uh, those are usually like more powerful attacks, usually like beam attacks and stuff. So um, for the special moves that use light, medium, and heavy, when you use the heavy version for pretty much all the, these special moves, um, it actually costs one level uh, to do them, and the they're usually I would say they're the EX version of the special. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Well, I guess you could call it that. Yeah. I, I would say it's the EX version. Um, do you guys remember some like some examples of like what the heavy version does? Yes, I remember Cell. Cell has a has a special move that's like um, looks like combo filler, I'd say. But the heavy version is this entire version of it that, mm -hmm. like I said before, Flash is like an unblockable, and it's clearly designed to be. An anti-air attack, like it's like a flash kick, right? Oh, I mean, it kind of looks like a flash kick. Well, yeah, it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like a jumping knee, right? And it goes into a follow-up, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And um, well, basically the idea is that because it's unblockable in, in this game, you can block in the air, so you could block anti-airs. Mm -hmm. um, that's a move that's specifically designed to anti-air an opponent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a like an example. Yeah, like oh. like yeah, it sells like that that flash kick move. Even though it is unblockable, like it only hits opponents in the air, so you know it's not like broken or anything, and it costs a, a level. So um, I I actually we recorded all the special attacks in the game. It's up on the channel if you guys want to check it out to see the differences. Like I, I usually go show the light, medium, and then the heavy version right after. And you guys can see all the heavy versions. Usually your character like flashes red, like it it's a tell on your opponent. <laughs> We kind of messed up in that video, though, because we didn't have one bar with some of the heavy specials. Yeah, I know, so. and, and I saw you guys desperately attempt to do the special. And it was really <laughs> hard to watch when I was when I was editing that footage. I'm like, I was like face palming, like, oh my god, that was stop mirror. trying. That was all mirror, man. Stop trying, man. I, it's, <laughs> was it mirror? I was remember I was texting. I'm like, who is this guy? Who's playing? Because I'm like watching this painful act of him trying to do a course circle four when it won't let you because it costs a level jeez it was it was frieza it was frieza it was near the worst the worst <laughs> i should show you guys the blooper footage of that it's really painful to watch though <laughs> oh boy but yeah at least you guys had time to you know record that they were but... giving us dirty looks man because we got the <laughs> <laughs> we had this we had this camera going and they're just like what are these yeah guys brutal. who are these mm -hmm. yahoos so um yeah uh the specials uh, some of them cost meter, and then, like I said, the supers in this game, so far we've seen level 1s, level 3s, and level 5 supers. Uh, Gohan specifically has a level 5. It's not use all 5 meters right away, though. It's a level 3 super that during the super's animation, you can spend an additional 2 to have Goku appear, and then you do like this combined family uh, Kamehameha uh, attack. It's, it's a spectacle. So, Dude, it looks so sick because it's it like, does. moment. The moment from the Cell Saga. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just and like, ah, uh, the nostalgia. Mm -hmm. and, and then it blows up the world. Like, yeah. And then it literally <laughs> blows up the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like we said Whoops. before, the combo system, guys, specials cancel into supers. And every single character so far has at least one level three super. Yep. Uh, Frieza yeah. has like multiple ones. Frieza is the super. only one that has a wake up super too, so he has a reversal super. Yeah, it's crazy. only when he's knocked down. So yeah, Frieza has a level three super. They can only do when the opponent knocks him down. <laughs> it's a reversal <laughs> level three yeah. super, and it does Actually, a shit ton of damage by the way. Yeah, and you only and there's no execution to it. You just need to hold a button, right, while you're waking yeah. up. Yeah, I, that's yeah, really I think annoying. you hold down right trigger, and it yeah. does it. Really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you gotta definitely be careful on Frieza when you knock him down. 
And uh, like I said, some characters have multiple level threes, like Frieza, for example, does. And there are um, install supers. Um, I think who Frieza's the only one that has Frieza's the only one, right? Yeah, Turns yeah, the only one, the... Frieza. Go the free spoilers, but Spoil yeah, free. spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and which amps up his speed, I think, and his damage. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure yeah, it was faster. Uh, at, I don't yeah, walk... definitely, definitely walking on the ground. It was. Faster, I think it so modified some of his supers too, but like I said, I don't yeah. remember. You guys mm -hmm. were messing around with that. You guys did at least one super when he was in Golden mm -hmm. Frieza. And then uh, as that install runs out, then Frieza has a point of recovery. Like, exactly yeah. like uh, Saul. Where yeah. he's mm -hmm. like, after his does his install, he like he's open for an attack after. Really mm -hmm. interesting. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and another thing to mention is that uh, Goku's level 3. Um, like, the transformation into Super Saiyan 3 is actually part of the super animation so that's yeah. not an install that's a uh, part of his super which i guess it's like lore wise makes sense because you it's know, out of control super saiyan 3 like super saiyan 3 is really hard to maintain for long periods of time so you got the lore there but oh god so, like it, it's not like what i wanted to say is not an install like it's part of the super basically yeah yeah like goku's level three like he literally turns super saiyan and then right after that he teleports behind the opponent and he begins the animation of his super but when you watch the gameplay footage, it looks like, you know, he's doing a super afterwards. Yeah, it's actually all one thing. I really like Majin Buu's level 3, by the way. Where he Is turns you into the chocolate candy and eats you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, if he kills you with that uh, with that super, uh, instead of getting, you know, the usual transition where someone gets, I don't know, like smashed into a oh, yeah, 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 or, yeah, or uh, stuff like that, uh, it, it just eats you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he just eats you and it goes right into the next. <laughs> yeah, you can just dead. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, fatality, man. bro. Fatality. Yeah, Majin Buu is <laughs> hilarious, dude. I definitely want to main him. That's so totally your character. It is my character. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally your character. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. He's so cool, though, man. He's so <laughs> cool, dude. <laughs> we'll see if they have the skinny Majin Buu. They have a Majin Buu team. <laughs> 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 Oh. Listen, I doubt it though. I doubt it. And they may give him an install, maybe a skinny install. That'd be kind of cool. If it was like a level three, they, they got a lot of potential mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, a lot of things. Oh, yeah. with this. All, all the transformations. Mm hmm. For sure. Um. Anything else we're missing, guys, on specials and supers? Uh. No. No. Right. Well, like we, we, we talked about really the talk. DHCs already, right? Yeah. Exactly. Go super into and tag super. Yeah. Mm hmm. We're not missing. Can you you could DHC for in level threes, right? Uh, I don't think so. But we, we never test tested that. that. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't don't know. Uh, I saw that when someone does a super and then you do a super, like if they're both beam supers and they collide, it it, it negates it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I, I especially like um in terms of special moves and supers. I especially like like Cell's design in this game, where he literally has like everything. Like, he, mm -hmm. he, he's literally, like, he has, like, well, the Kamehameha super, and he's just, like, he's got the dive, kind of the dive move. He's got, like, a, a like you know, his cell, right? Like, he has a combination of everybody's attacks. It's really cool. Yeah, exactly. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Like the best voice actor, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the goat, uh, goat status. Moving on, uh, any other mechanics? So this is the wrap-up, basically, on, on the mechanics in the game. If there's anything else you guys want to mention. Um, I wrote um, down some things, so I'll discuss it first, and if I miss anything, let me know. So first, are... Sorry? Sorry, go go ahead. Um, the air recovery. So just like in Anime Fighters games, guys, when you're doing your combos, it'll show the combo counter, and then uh, your opponent will have a chance to flip out of the combo if it drops. Uh, in this game, the air recovery it doesn't seem like you can control the direction you flip out seems to be only one direction which is back and in this game it's like persona where you hold down the button and you'll recover at, immediately as soon as you're able to rather than just you know tapping it like in in guilty gear for example um anything else with the air recovery i'm missing guys you also you also recover it automatically even if you don't press anything but i don't know if it's faster or not really yes are you sure yes because if that's true then how would the number turn blue yeah, that's what uh, I'm saying. From, from Dragon Rush. 
not it's not just from Dragon Rush. I'm positive it's not just from Dragon Rush. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's no, other there's other instances of like it. Super Dash and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, what was I saying is that maybe if you don't hold the buttons or press them, uh, you still air recover, but not as fast. Mm. But okay. you definitely air recover, and sure, okay. and sure. It's... And what that does is it kind of adds a little meta where if you anticipate, you can drop your combo on purpose, and you yeah. And since there's only one direction you can air recover, your opponent is gonna have an idea of where you're gonna be. And maybe be able to uh, reset you and put you into another combo, possibly. Um, OTGs, there's a bunch of OTGs in the game, and you can combo mm -hmm. from them. There doesn't seem to be a roll mechanic, so there's a lot of OTGs. Uh, walking forward builds meter, Guilty Gear styles. Um, when you walk forward, like you don't, when you walk back, you don't gain meter, obviously. You only gain meter when you walk forward, and then when you touch your opponent, as soon as you touch them, you no longer gain meter when you walk towards them. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, other uh, another couple of things uh, that we forgot to mention before. Go ahead. Um, when you press down and a heavy, you get a universal launcher. Like it's kind of like a uppercut move. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on the character what it is, but it's it's a universal launcher. Are you and sure it's a universal launcher? Because there's sweeps too. Yeah, but they're not. They're mediums. Those are mediums. Oh. Down and medium gives you a sweep kind of move. Like, for example, uh, Gohan has a, like, a slide. It's down medium. But down heavy gives you a launcher, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And um, Just like neutral heavy does a wall bounce, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and another thing is that if you press special and light together, you get a key charge. <gasps> like your character, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your character <laughs> just stands there charging and gives you meter. <laughs> So that could be something that you can do, like to for maybe an opponent is trying to turtle and you're just. I don't see it practical at all, honestly. I mean, you you have no to, practical use of this ability. You have to have assist to cover you. The recovery is so bad. It's on insane. It, but, it's insane, like, dude. It's like, so easy maybe, to punish. There are so many mechanics in this game are... that get you towards your opponent instantly. I just, yeah, I don't see it happening, guys. <laughs> I don't know, you, you work your magic to bait your opponent into an, into an assist, into a combo, into victory, and then you just... Do your key charge and then <laughs> give your opponent a chance to kill you? <laughs> no, you're like, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Use the key, use the key charge. Use the key charge to bait something. Maybe with assists, I don't know. That'd be cool. Like, yeah, you're, you're saying it's like, use it something as like, you know, afterwards, like, I don't know, like Q from Street Fighter 3, like doing this taunt after you land your combo or something. <laughs> Yeah, that could be another thing. Maybe certain setups with hard knockdowns or whatnot. It's a it's a very Dragon Ball mechanic for sure. Yeah, it's, it's it has to be in the there. game. That's why they included it. It absolutely has to be in the game. And 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 one benefit is if the opponent lets you charge that thing, it, it makes you the the amount of meter you gain as you charge it goes faster and faster and faster. And kind you could like be at level good. seven in a, in a few seconds if your opponent lets you. Mm-hmm. It's kind, of, it's kind of like S Groove and CVS too, or um, is it not KOF ninety eight that mechanic? Mm. I'm glad you you named CVS two first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was looking up some CVS one footage today. There was like a, I was reading a, a thread where people were talking about like the best uh, character select screens in fighting games. And oh, I was like CVS the first thing that popped in my head was uh, CVS one. I really like Capcom vs. Oh, that like was the, pretty cool. Yeah. The style of the game was pretty sick. Um, yeah, any other mechanics we're missing, guys? Um, there's so many, man. Just don't there, there's jump cancel, so you can jump cancel your normals on hit or block. Uh -huh. um, Let me check your tweet, Kelly, while you're talking. See if I you anything. can you can micro dash. So so the pressure is kind of structured similar to to Persona or Blast Blue. So you can go something like two uh, L two L. And, and then you can like stagger that or you can go 2L micro dash and then back to like 2L um, to kind of pressure them and then kind of try to frame trap from there with like maybe five medium um, stuff like that or you can like do part of the auto combo but not complete the whole auto combo like the third hit of most of the auto combos um, will go into like a capture animation state but if you if you stop at the second hit of the auto combo you can like jump cancel Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thing about the last hit of the strings is that you cannot special cancel it on the ground, it seems. So you cannot make it safe, basically. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe that's character specific. I don't remember if we tested it with everyone, but I'm pretty sure that Gohan and Goku could so not. Cell, you couldn't either. Yeah. Uh, it's probably like, yeah, maybe if you're fast enough in your fingers, and well, not only your fingers, but reactions. If you realize that your uh, string is getting blocked, then you can cancel a second attack and a special to make it safe or make it safer. It's probably and... better to can to call an assist in those situations mm -hmm. to keep yourself safe. So like, if you overcommit to like a key blast barrage, like where you're mashing it, um, then it's better to call an assist to keep you safe at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, mm -hmm. one thing we forgot to mention. Um, this is most about the dragon rush mechanic. Uh, like you guys said before, when when you as if you get caught by the dragon rush mechanic, there's nothing you can do to stop it at that point. Like you're 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 gonna get knocked up. But another thing, the one thing we wanted to test was, okay, well, what happens if it's unblockable? What happens when you call an assist, put them in block stun, and then you use it? Are they just gonna get hit by it? And what happens is your character actually dashes towards them, and then nothing happens. So <laughs> you can't be cheap and yeah, call assist into your dragon rush and force them to get screwed over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to use overheads yes. and lows at that point. Traditionally, yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like a traditional throw where it doesn't work in blocks them mm -hmm. or hits them. I'm still looking through your notes, Kelly. Anything else we're missing? Um, so oh yeah, there's snapbacks. I don't know how to get those to work though. What there is? Yes. Really? Yes. I didn't see that. <laughs> there's footage of it. Oh wow. Okay, that's cool. When you I snap them out, do they lose their recoverable health? Uh, that I don't remember. Can you call into footage. it? What does it look like? <laughs> I need to it look, actually looks like it looks like Dragon Rush, but then they just get knocked off screen. No shit, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Um, there's also guard cancel into like tags. Guard cancel. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're talking about yeah, you're talking about canceling blocks done into switching. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Marvel's Capcom 2 was it was a weird motion. It was back to down plus assist. Uh, um, I don't know. I can't remember what the motion was. Also, there's some weird thing where like I was testing what happens like if you're mashing an assist call and block stun, mm -hmm. and like if there's a gap, you'll see like counter assist something message show up on screen, mm -hmm. and in some cases the assist actually shows up behind the opponent, and then they do their attack. So I was just Weird. trying to test whether Gohan's assist was like Psylocke assist. Uh -huh. By the way, it's not. It, <laughs> when he when he comes in, like yep. when he hops in, he's not invincible. But then when he does the uppercut thing, he's invincible. Uh -huh. Or at least the hitbox is really good. Uh -huh. But there's cases where like I'm mashing in and block stun to see like how good this assist is. Uh -huh. And then I see that counter assist call show up, right? And And then Gohan shows up behind the opponent and then he does the uppercut. But it's not like always behind... Uh, the opponent when that message shows up because I had one case of where the message shows up and Gohan shows up in front and then he got hit <laughs> and that's when that's when I knew he it wasn't blocked. invincible <laughs> <He got blocked. laughs> that's um, when I knew yeah and uh, what's it called man what was I going to say now now I forgot <sighs> nice job Oh, I just had it it's on the tip of my tongue <clears throat> was uh, it we haven't really places? talked about the differences in characters yeah and the difference is an assist. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and, um, you guys can like, start so, explaining the characters. Yeah. So from character perspective wise, I felt that four of the six characters played very much the same. So like Gohan, Vegeta, Goku, and Cell all Everyone played wants very to get similar. In. Yeah. Every, like they're all very similar. Now you can argue that that Goku and Cell are kind of well rounded, and then Vegeta's like more of the aggressor. But in all honesty, they play very similar to each other. Yeah, the, according to the of, of, official descriptions, mm -hmm. uh, Goku is, well, the well-rounded character, but uh, I think it's just because he has a beam special. Otherwise, yeah. he's more of a like up-close character. Then yeah. you have Vegeta, who's supposed to be the, the rushdown character, which really surprised me because like historically in Dragon Ball games, he's always been about you know beam attacks and uh key blasts and whatnot and, and he has a key blast special mm -hmm. but anyways, i mean he, he still has big bang attack he has like the other you know like he has a uh, key blast barrage special right yeah uh, <clears throat> that's his assist gohan, too 
Yeah. No, wait, it's, it's, just, it's just the... Um, it's a key blaster. Knee. He's in the air and he just shoots a bunch oh. of them. I, I thought it was the knee uppercut. No, no, it's actually... His is just the... It's basically Cold Star. Amatrasi's Cold Star from Marvel 3. Mm-hmm. Then you have uh, Gohan, who's supposed to be the really fast character, but he's got stubby limbs. Really stubby. He's got lolly, he's got lolly limb syndrome. <laughs> lolly, limbs. <laughs> lolly limbs. Like, he's really short, right? Yeah. So he has to be up close. So uh, probably his punishing, you know, capabilities are limited just because his combos don't go really far. Mm-hmm. And he's got stuff like uh, air legs, you know, like Chen Li's air legs to approach. Um, when you guys did his dragon kick, like when you guys were recording the specials, you guys forgot that you have to mash it. And oh, he, really? He has, like, didn't know. It didn't tell. Well, because it, it, it says on the special thing, mash, to do more hits. So, oh, does um, it? Yeah, it did. I was so wondering I how I rolled my that. eyes when I saw you guys record it. But anyways, if you guys seen it, it's crazy. He like he hits them like a bunch of times and he goes back and forth. It looks really cool. I, I saw videos of that after, after mm-hmm. we got back from Ethereum. I'm like, I wonder how they get that. <laughs> yeah, you, no, just, you just keep mashing the button. Now we know. Now you, now we know. Now you know. Um, just like, 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 um... <laughs> Then you have um, you have Cell, who's another we on like the all all rounder character. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a command grab, right? Like we discussed before, the, the unblock unblockable thing, and he's yeah. got a lot of moves that moves him that move him forward. forward. He's got yeah. like bison slide. <laughs> yeah, bison oh, yeah, he's slide. Got, he's got the bison slide. That's true. Yeah, which is kind of funny because he's played by. Uh, <laughs> then you have Frieza, who's uh... it's a conspiracy. <laughs> well, Frieza dude. was the. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, this is this is because because Future Trunks got announced. I want Future Trunks to be like Kai, because the voice actor is the same. The oh, Japanese no. voice actor. Is he gonna <laughs> have because he's got a sword. He's gonna have Ride the Lightning. Yes, he has a sword. I want, no, I wanted to have Greed Greed Sever just because that'd be absolutely hilarious mm. to see Trunks do Greed Sever. He's a Greed Sever, and everyone everyone <laughs> collectively everyone collectively rolls their eyes. <laughs> I can't wait to see Future Trunks. Uh, the gameplay. Um, it's gonna be sick. In, be- in before is another rushdown monster. Oh uh, well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> then you be. have um, let me think. Frieza. Who's a, Basically, Zoli. like Frieza and Boo are the only two characters that play differently from the rest of the cast. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Actually, Frieza yeah, is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Frieza is supposed to be well, supposed to be. He's a zoning character. Like he's got yes. a lot of uh, moves that create projectiles that cover most of the screen. So it's hard to approach him, and um, yeah, there's a bunch of specials that push you back quite a bit. His heavy, like the projectile where it creates like a pillar, the heavy version of that is so good. It creates like three pillars, mm-hmm. and it yeah. like, covers so much space, and you're just like, oh man, this move mm-hmm. is so but good. But then he has like an install, and then all of a sudden he's rushing you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, like it's it, it, boosts, it boosts his projectiles too, like he's oh, okay, doing okay. rocks. So he's like in Golden Freezer, he's got Doom Rocks. Mm-hmm. And then you have Majin Buu, who's like this kind of like oddball character. Uh, <laughs> got, I guess, got a bunch of weird things because he's got a cartwheel special. Which you could do in that, the air. Yeah, and it has a hitbox, but it's like it builds distance. Yeah. It's pretty weird. Um, then you have like this, he can basically trap you. With uh, yeah. like he it's... throws that pink tentacle yeah. at you. Yeah, exactly. He throws like and, a part of it's... his body at you and it, ca- and it captures you. And it's you. very, very hard to land it on the ground. I don't think we tested it in the air. But if you land but... it, they're they're screwed. The cap. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's a trap basically. Mm-hmm. And and well, very silly supers, I'll say. <laughs> like he has this one where he's. Uh, now you made me angry, and it's like this heat dome attack kind of. The yeah. thing is so good too because it's like, uh, it's like really invincible. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen all these videos of people trying to punish it and then just get hit, and they're just. <laughs> I can see the person rolling their eyes off. Yeah, <laughs> because the thing is, it is pretty slow, so you're like, oh, well, then I can do something about it, but you really can't. Yeah, <laughs> like invincibility frame. You block the first hit, and then and then he's like charging. You're like, oh, maybe I can hit him, and then mm-hmm. it's like you hit, you throw up that button, and then the rest of the animation goes off, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck my life. He has that, <laughs> that that Honda splash move. He can super cancel yeah, into that from there. Yeah. Yeah. Like Honda Splash like, goes into like this canned like follow up mm-hmm. where he smacks you on the ground. 
Yeah, he's, like, like he's we definitely said, one of the slower characters, and he's got a big hitbox, and his combos mm-hmm. don't seem to be very long, but um, he's got a lot of cool stuff, like a lot of weird moves, like you guys said, and and that that overhead from his medium is crazy. And the yeah, normal exactly. That's like, an overhead, yeah. The, the, so slow though. The thing, the thing that I can uh, like imagine, like the direction that the game's going, I think. Mm-hmm. Is that like certain characters like because uh, Majin Buu has an overhead, but it doesn't have blows, which mm-hmm. is interesting, and so and other characters have blows, but they don't have overheads. Yeah. So a good way to build your team, or at least I'm guessing, is that is to mix up characters that have overheads and characters that oh, have yeah. blows, so that you know you cannot just down back your entire team like uh, as if like you cannot already, but. <laughs> That that's going to you know add a, an additional layer to your offense. I remember because what I was going to say now, guys. With tagging and stuff. I remember now. There's what counter hits it? in the game. Oh, there's counter hits, and they they change things, right? Mm-hmm. I I swear I saw a wall splat and stuff. Not a wall splat, but you know wall bounce on certain things. Yeah, no, no, no definitely counter hits. If you get hit, uh, like if you get counter hit, you flash red. It's not the same flash as the uh, the unblockable. Like the unblockable releases this like circle of light. Mm-hmm. It's like this orange thing, and the counter is just your your, your sprite flashes red. Yeah, I, I remember the counter hits. All right. Definitely, I'm guessing more damage or stuff like that. Maybe more untackable time in the air. All right, let's move on. Let's get close to wrap this up. Um, last topic is basically uh, our potential and concerns. We talked a little bit about this already uh, during like the presentation and stuff. But yeah, you guys want to go? Tell me your like biggest the potential of this game and basically your biggest concerns, if any. Uh, Mirror, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the the game definitely looks like it has potential because it has a lot of like a, a really. I can I say it? Uh, like the cast can be so interesting, right? Because the series has so many interesting characters, and so it's so varied. And they could they could include characters from maybe the movies, or the like. Broly would be a perfect example, right? Like he's not he's technically not a canon character, but he's no. just he's so, so popular. iconic. He's so iconic. yeah, exactly. Everyone wants Broly. I personally want to <laughs> see besides like the typical characters. I wouldn't mind seeing Bojack. Oh yeah. Well, then we need, you know, like we definitely need big bodies. Otherwise, you cannot have the. Yeah, the, you need those uh, archetypes. Yeah, you don't. You, you cannot have the like typical low tier grappler from Arxis games. <laughs> Dude, Tigger and Potemkin have been top tier at one iteration of the game. Get out of here! <laughs> like what? Twenty games. <laughs> but anyways. Nobody um, wants to relive S tier Potemkin. Get out of here. I don't uh, need. I don't. I don't need to see those unblockables again. You sure? Potemkin players sure do like. <laughs> that iteration. I don't need two S to suction me in, and then I gotta <laughs> deal with the command grab mind game afterwards. Well, anyways, uh, so the potential is definitely there for the cast. Uh, there are going to be like even continuing on, you know, the the content, right? There can be so many different stages and so many different modes, right? Like in the past, even for casual players, mm-hmm. uh, um, they had a lot of stuff like you know, find the Dragon Balls and unlock specific things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the content can be there. Uh, the game definitely has potential, even on the, like even with, uh, you know what we've seen so far is just refining the combo system so that it allows you, you know, to express yourself a bit more, add more depth to it. Mm-hmm. But the mechanics are really solid. Like you have a, a lot of different things; they're already pretty varied. Um, so I can see the game being successful because, like we said, the IP is really strong. Uh, Dragon Ball is extremely popular, and um, yeah, I can I can definitely foresee this game doing great uh, mm-hmm. as long as it's you know competitive enough to to last more than a month. <laughs> and hopefully, we'll see it in tournaments. Hopefully, a lot of pros will pick it up and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to it for sure. Um, yeah, my main concern is just that you know combos so far are um, 
kind of lackluster, I'd say. Okay. They don't they don't look that interesting. And then of course, you know, there's always balancing problems like we don't know uh, in the like honestly if I had to analyze the E3 beta that we had that mm -hmm. we played the E3 demo, um, you know, I I cannot even think of a tier list we didn't have enough time with it. But yeah. of course in a game with all like supposedly a lot of characters. System, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah many... exactly. Like with a lot of characters, um, hopefully everyone's at least a bit vi like it's viable, you know. Uh, of course, there are going to be top tiers and low tiers and whatnot, but uh, I hope that they do a great, a good job with balancing. Mm -hmm. Kelly, mm -hmm. uh, but the potential of the game is really high. Um, it's the one game I can foresee multiple communities coming together just yeah. because it caters to. It has stuff to cater to the uh, anime fighting uh, game community. It also has. Um, mechanics that cater to Marvel community. Uh, then you have um, the strength of the IP, which can bring in a lot of like the the fan base of Dragon Ball to it. Even the ones that like that really like like the Xenoverse games and whatnot. You know, they can they could get into it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of potential for popularity there. Um, my concerns is the depth of the game, mm -hmm. um, and Li Joe pretty much like summed most of it up, as well mm -hmm. as Mir did. There's just the combo system needs to have more depth to it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, that could be a potential concern. Uh, I just think a Gatling system would really help it. it would really help resolve those issues. Um, visually, presentation-wise, the sound effects. Um, music whatnot all of that is really spot on yeah um it's very faithful to the uh or like the source material mm -hmm. um there's already plenty of videos that compare uh pages from the manga or, or and scenes from the anime um to the game mm -hmm. and like how accurate it is so it's really good um there's a lot of attention to detail like blowing like knock reflecting or deflecting projectiles into the background and yeah. destroys the background um, even like the stage transitions, all that stuff, like lots of attention to detail, lots of love taken and care taken into uh, handling the IP properly, mm -hmm. but also having mechanics within the game that's uh, very competitive or familiar to competitive players. Just yeah, just that the one gripe is the character is the combo system so far. Mm -hmm. um, I also want characters to be more diverse um, they already mentioned it in several interviews uh, the E3 bell was just to have familiar characters uh, and easy characters mm -hmm. to play <laughs> but um, with four of the characters playing very similar to each other I want to see more diversity and play styles mm -hmm. uh, so um, but I pretty much have no fear about that like I'm pretty sure based on like how Frieza and Majin Buu played. I'm pretty sure uh, we'll have a good diversity of playstyles in the end. Mm -hmm. But I would actually like them to revisit those four characters and actually like tweak them so that they're more diverse from each other. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely would like to see more assist types right, rather than uh, being stuck to the one assist. Because mm -hmm. um, right now some of the assists kind of cover... Uh, the same angles as other assists, yeah. just kind of in a different style. Like, like Vegeta and Cell, they kind of overlap in terms of like the angle that the assist covers. But Vegeta's more of like I mix like to mix you up afterwards because mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, hits uh, blocks done to his. While Cell's more like single attack beam um, for like neutral as well as like maybe counter assist call. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see more diversity in assists, like being able to choose. Uh, a different assist for one character. Also, we'd like to see um, being able to DHC, like pick what super you can DHC into. Because right oh, now yeah. you can't. Yeah, forgot to mention that. So right now you, you're you're locked into uh, one super for the DHC, which makes it very awkward to DHC out to Gohan, because when he DHCs, he shoots at a 45 degree angle. 
so it's like impossible to. It's really hard. To <laughs> Unless the opponent tries to jump and gets hit by it, like what? That or or that or you're like combo point blank into the bean super and then you DHC right away, right? Just to clarify, um, guys, to to DHC the super, you hold down the assist button during your super. That's why you yeah. can't control it. Mm -hmm. So I definitely would like to see being able to choose which super you can DHC to. Mm -hmm. um, what else would be nice in that? Uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, Found yeah, yeah. Wanna... The foundation is really solid. Basically, like the neutral game is very Marvel Two ish. So mm -hmm. like the way you move around to, and then assist calls, counter assist calls, just an extra layer of being able to call them in the air and mm -hmm. call t uh, both at once. So I think that's really good. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. All right. Well, both you guys summed it up pretty well. Like, there's not much else I could say. I I may agree with both you guys. Um, there's been a, a couple of interviews saying that like they're you know being really faithful to DBZ, so hopefully uh, that doesn't interfere with the depth, you know, because they're they're designing the special moves and all that stuff based directly from the manga and the anime, rather than thinking about the actual applications of it in a fighting game to make sure that you know, like you said, the characters are diverse, right? So if you over over like make it too faithful, then you're gonna you know derail from the actual like fighting game itself. You know what I mean? What? lore based balance yeah lore based balance <laughs> that's a good way to put it and uh they did say that like they're they're they are also like being faithful in the sense that like if they have some like yamcha or like like weaker characters uh they're gonna they're gonna be like weaker com they're not they're, they don't like the idea of like uh like these weak characters standing up to these super powerful characters like they want it to be lore based right so they might work around it by making them have more powerful assists or, or utility and such, right? So mm -hmm. I read that in an interview as well. So it's really interesting, the development process of this and how they're going to do that. And yeah, we just want depth, man. We definitely want depth. Um, I think two auto combo or three different like auto combos, especially when you can do them in the air, I think that's a little overboard. I think like one auto combo is fine, right? And as long as they make the manual combos, as long as they make them a lot more damaging, right? And actually require, you know, some execution. I think they'll be fine because then the casual players will be happy that they're able to do these flashy combos and then the more competitive players are happy that they have something that they can work towards and give them an advantage towards other, right? For mastering these combos. Uh, and I think the vanish mechanic definitely comes into play there for sure. And like I said, Kelly, uh, like you said, um, definitely more assist types would be cool. Uh, that way you're able to uh, really customize your team and not feel bogged down because you're like, okay, these two assists are too popular. Maybe I can't use these two characters on my team then. I don't want to run in those kind of situations. I want it to be like, okay, if, if he's in this uh, part of the team, if he's the second character or, or, the, or the anchor, right, then we want different assists to choose to make these combinations work out, right? Mm -hmm. Basically just to our, our imagination. But yeah, uh, that pretty much sums it up. Um, I think... Uh, the reception on this game has been so insane. The amount of awards and stuff, I'm pretty sure everyone's really sold on this game. I think, uh, you know, at this point, the the marketing campaign is already complete. You know what I mean? Like, everything they've shown is good enough to sell this game. And I think the only thing that can happen at this point is people find out things they don't like about this game, really. Yeah. Uh, it's it just that. So, um, they're going to keep announcing characters. We'll see how big this roster actually is. Since it's a 3v3 game, I imagine it's going to be a ton of characters so uh you have so many characters to choose from from the universe too but there was like another in interview where they didn't want to use um tell pai pai from dragon ball hmm. they're like oh like the original dragon ball yeah <laughs> so they're like yeah we're not gonna include tell pai pai <laughs> <laughs> That's well cool. the, the the game is definitely not going to have like as many characters as like other games other dragon ball games in the past just because those were much they had simpler. like every character in the yeah in the I think in some of the games. Yeah, like, the games Bo Bodoka and Kaichi three had something like including transformations, hundred and sixty characters. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so out there, dude. Like yeah, that's a pretty big feed. But, yeah. Is that the yeah, PlayStation know, one? Uh, PlayStation two. Mm. That's funny. Okay. Well, they also they made a Budokai series on PlayStation 2. I only know what the Super NES. No, no, ones. no. Budokai Tenkaichi. It's the arena games. Like uh, mm -hmm. I only I only know the SNES because the SNES ones had Tenkaichi Budokai ones <laughs> too. Um, well, anyways, yeah, I I, I guess I'm. Um, hopefully the netcode is good too. 
Oh, Not code and content. True. There's got to be a lot of content. Oh, speaking too. of content, I should mention that they they did confirm they're gonna have like a, a big single player content to it. Mm-hmm. Story mode. I don't know yeah, about story, story mode specifically, guess, but they are building. They they said they're going to details yet, but there mm-hmm. will be some type of single player. Well, if content. it's if it's like the past Dragon Ball games, they could have, yeah, kind of like a story mode that goes over the events of the manga and the anime, and have like specific battles. Yeah. Play out. Yeah, with cinematics cool. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like timeline wise, they've been using so far characters from the different timelines within DBZ. So, no, oh, it's called Dragon like, Ball Fighters. So yeah, so I sense. could see like story mode oh, going over, <laughs> going over the different story arcs. Right? Yeah, obviously Cell from Cell Saga. I mean, Gohan's from the Cell Saga because he's just a teen. Um, we know Vegeta's before the Majin Buu arc because he doesn't have the M on his forehead, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then, then you'd, Goku would be like during the Majin Buu because his level 3 is uh, level 3. Yeah, Super, Super Saiyan 3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, they, don't, they don't seem to be having characters like they're going to have multiple Gokus or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I like would like to see part. a fusion mechanic though. Like I want to cool. see, I want to see them like forced to use Vegeta and Goku, and then if you have those two, you can spend meter to Whoa, fuse the two crazy. characters. I think that'd be um, plus sick. That's getting a little crazy. That's like, little crazy. I'm going to guess that they're going to have the fusions as separate characters. I can see that too. Yeah. But I'd, I'd also, I would also like to see like a fusion mechanic, because I think that'd be sick. Yeah, and then merge your health bars and get this monster yeah. that you cannot mm-hmm. kill. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate goal we want a... in this game is... For it to sell as many copies as possible, have a really good ecosystem where there's a ton of players playing online, and we want it to be competitive enough for to play and spectate in tournaments for sure. That's yes. like the ultimate goal. So hopefully that code's good and the content is good and the game is easy enough for casuals to get into it and not get discouraged and get destroyed online, but also deep <laughs> enough that the comp- comp- competitive players don't get bored with it either and it gets stale. So mm-hmm. yeah, really interesting. Very hard balancing. Find act. the mm-hmm. the perfect middle ground. Mm-hmm. I don't think any games ever achieve <clears throat> that perfect middle ground. Yeah, no, it's it's hard. Definitely, right? definitely not. But as the future like comes to a close, you know, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely hoping hoping for this game to be the first. <laughs> All right, guys, let's close this up. Uh, Mir, Killy, always a pleasure, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me and discussing this with me, and. Uh, you know, a lot more Dragon Ball coverage coming soon. Uh, don't forget to like the video, guys. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And the next t- part of content we should be getting is when the, the Dragon Ball Fighters uh, closed beta comes out. I'll do my best to get a key. And I'll be going through all these mechanics and breaking down all the characters for you guys. And just giving you as much information as possible on the channel uh, to have you guys prepared. And, you know, make your mind up if you want to purchase this game if it's for you. So, once again, guys... Uh, Take it easy.